Hello, hello, Judgmental Beef here. Happy yeah. Father's Day to all you other motherfuckers out there. Mm. Yeah, I know. We we. <laughs> that's fine. We'll edit out the entire first six minutes. You can yell at me six. <laughs> now I'm just gonna yell, brother. I just need to yell right now. Okay, no, like yeah, decisions. Joey. Fuck it. We're getting into it. Fuck it. We'll do it live. We'll do it live. <laughs> Fuck it's it. Like, Jesus Christ. So, all right. So, life decisions, uh, guys. I'm at a I'm at a crossroads right now in my life. <laughs> the very no bad, shit. Very bad crossroads, crossroads of what? Crossroads of whether or not to take your desk uh, desktop oh. and throw it out the window. Oh man, I'm just gonna start. I'm just gonna start welding like York does and uh, take up welding because we were talking about the apocalypse. <laughs> well, not me and Beef. Me and no, Vicer, I, I think we were talking about the apocalypse. And I was like, you know what, York's got it, he's got it understood because he knows welding and that that will help you a lot in the apocalypse. But me knowing pool science, not gonna help very much in the apocalypse. Like, Oh yeah, I mean, what do you think video redaction is gonna do for me if the world ends? Yeah, oh yeah, there, there's not gonna be, <laughs> there's not gonna be much of a need to edit videos. Everybody's gonna, uh, there's, no, there's not gonna be a such thing as being canceled in the apocalypse. I mean, there's not gonna be a police. No, not like a police department type thing, you know? It's like, oh, shit. Well, I mean, one could make the argument that there's not a police now. Uh, well, <laughs> you know, they're not they're not, uphold, they're not here to uphold justice. That's not what they do. Like, I don't know. All the DUI guy videos that I watch on YouTube tell me differently. Nah, you know, just let them crash into a tree. The species gets stronger. Like, oh, so I'm at a crossroads, guys. I... I in real life, I have a business. I run a business by myself. Uh, I haven't slept for 30 hours and I'm feeling like I need inspiration. What the fuck is wrong with you, Joey? Why have you Ooh. not slept for 30 hours, brother? Good lord, buddy. This, that's, uh, that's a bit rough, dude. This man <laughs> constantly complains about how his body is sabotaging him, yet he doesn't sleep for 30 hours. Well, it's a constant He's only cycle. Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> It's a constant cycle. He sabotages his body, he, you know, then his uh, sabotage it right back. It's just a, one big Ouroboros of self-sabotage. <laughs> Those fucking pigs will still try to assert themselves as king shit in the end times. Everybody's equal, brother. You can have all the SWAT toys, but guess what? You got a uh, you got an ugly trash militia coming at them. They can't they can't shoot them all down. Like <laughs> Okay, so in, in real life, I have a business, I run a business, I own a business. I've been running it for the last 16 months. I've had a business for 16 months. And it's a successful business. To, despite my best efforts, it is a successful business. I have somehow managed, everybody wants me. I, you know, in the last three weeks, I've turned down like 16 accounts because I'm just like, look, y'all, I got too many, too many accounts. I don't need any more fucking accounts. Like... It is by far the most money I have ever made in my entire life. Without a doubt, the yes. most money I have ever made in my entire life. Like, so much money that now I understand why celebrities are so detached from reality. Uh, and I'm just making, I mean, I'll give you guys the real. I don't fucking care. Like, it doesn't make right. a difference. Before taxes, I make six figures. Like, I make, I make low six figures. Probably, like, in the range of, like, 120 to 130 uh, a year annually after taxes probably in the range of like i don't know 110 105 maybe you know i don't uh, know i haven't are, actually uh, i haven't I actually you done. are criminally underpaying your taxes yeah well i was gonna say i haven't actually done my taxes since i've been in the business i uh, I, uh, I applied oh. for an extension so uh, i'm just like i'll figure it out in october <laughs> So, you know, like they so I, I made good money, the most money I've ever made in my entire life. And hey, that, real, real quick, six, can we can we change the um, the, the title of the show to um, uh, People's Exhibit A? <laughs> yeah, just yeah. To, just to, for when we need to submit this for evidence later. Yeah, yeah exactly. The IR, <laughs> I'm sure the IRS are going to come to my stream. Like. <laughs> Without a doubt, like that's. Anyways, that's fine. Sorry, go ahead. I don't really care about taxes, to be honest with you. Like, I, I'm not. I do understand why people become, uh, why business owners, small town business owners, become Republicans. I get it now. I understand. Right. That that was gonna be my joke earlier. Is that Six has made so much money, he's becoming Republican. The, the, the I will never fully be Republican because today, what stands as the Republican Party has nothing to do with actual 
real life, you know, traditional right. conservatism. Like that's yeah, just it, it's, it's it's literally just about hey let the let's keep the rich white folk in power. Yeah. I, mean, you know. <laughs> I don't really care about taxes. Absolute shop you have to <laughs> And so, you know, it's like, I don't, I don't mind paying my taxes. That's fine. Because like, look, it takes money to make a civilization run. All right. That's fine. Right. The, I mean, the, the premier model of taxation, the, what it's supposed to be is you, you, income taxes, government programs leads back to income. Yeah. And it all just kind of circles. Back. That's the way it's supposed to work. Yeah. As long as motherfuckers aren't taking money out of the system. Yeah. But it don't work like that ever. Of no. course. Why? Yeah, but. because you put humans into anything and yeah. it fucks it up. Yeah. Oh yeah. Exactly. The one thousand percent. Can we speed run the stream by just telling you to trim down your clientele? <laughs> no. I no, mean, no. you're no, not no. wrong, Joey. No, 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 no. So I'm making the most money I've ever made in my entire life. That that is important because before I was making the most money in my entire life, I was I inherited this business. I want to say yes. it's not inherit to be quite truthfully honest because like look I I ran the routes to this business for like 6 years working for my father Pool Alpha. Now Pool Alpha he retired, I basically inherited the routes. I was already running the routes. Like yes. the father Pool Alpha was just cashing the checks. I was making all the decisions, handling all the the customers, uh, doing making all the shots, calling all the shots. I was the one running the routes, not my fucking father. He was just cashing the goddamn checks and then firing people through the phone when they fucking complained. Um, yes. So I, that's important, you know. Like that's I have an established clientele. I have an established, basically for the most part, secure money. Every time I go to my post office box, there's fucking money in that mailbox. That's right. nice, and that's important because even when I was working for Pool Alpha, I was broke as shit all the time. The Pool yep. Alpha paid me twenty two hundred dollars a month. 1099 my ass, $2,200 a month. That's that's uh, literally half of it. I was like 55 to 60% went to my rent. And the rest of it, I just fucking, you know. I, I'm yeah, uh, Joey uh, is over there absolutely gobsmacked that you made $2,200 a month, which is 25 grand a year, which is poverty. That's what that is. That's poverty. Yes. Yeah. And, and it, it sucked, too, because I was basically trapped because I was like, OK, how am I supposed to go and find twenty two hundred dollars a month with, you know, my resume? My resume looks like shit. I've had a lot of weird jobs. All right. None of them. No, none of them coincide with another. So it's kind of hard to it's kind of hard to go find a really good paying job when, you know, one of your jobs, your uh, your most recent job was uh, 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 scooping the liquid shit out of a 76 year old vagina for five years. That's, you know, I mean, it's good if I want to go into nursing, but I don't want to go into nursing. I'm done with nursing. And then other than that, being a fucking carny for an outdoor children's amusement park and that's good if i want to work for a traveling circus but you know other than that doesn't hey, really translate you could always go back to reorganizing magazines at the kroger <laughs> that was one of my favorite jobs to be honest <laughs> with you being a third party auditor that shit was great a merchandiser it was wonderful like so oh it's God. it's important the money is important because when i was poor I once one time I I was like, you know what? I I'm going to give myself a special little treat. I'm going to give myself a special little treat. I'm going to go to China Buffet and get some oh uh, get some General Tso's chicken. <laughs> Ooh <-wee. laughs> and I the one time that I went and bought myself a little special treat to eat, I fucking overdrafted myself and I Oh no. So I ended up paying fucking all together with bank fees like $60 for some General Tso's chicken and it was mid. This is mid oh, as fuck. No. And oh. after that happened, I was like, you know what? Never again. I refuse to be poor ever again. Never. I refuse. Okay, flash forward 16 months. I've been running this business and pfft, 
every day, the working out in the Florida fucking heat, 10, 11, 12 hours a fucking day, come home, take a shit in a shower, separate, not at the same time, that would be more efficient, but separate. And then by the time like I get to the point where I can eat a frozen Amy's organic tofu scrambler with Jack Links to own the libs, by the time I get to that point, it's already fucking like 7.30, 8 o'clock at night, I have two hours to myself. And then I have to work OTL, I have to fucking, you know, check in with friends. But in reality, what I really have to do is I have to fucking work on the business and text people back and fucking call people back and email people back. So I have little to zero spare time. So that's the preface. That's the preface. That's where I'm at right now. I, I make a good amount of money. I don't have to worry about my bills, which is great which is great because when I was poor, I remember fantasizing all the time about like, if I just had money, if right. I just had more money, if I was just rich, you know, I would have no problems. All my problems would dissipate. And guess what? That's true. When I, I got to the point where I didn't have to worry about paying my well, bills, a lot, of the, no. a lot of the problems did dissolve, but they were just replaced by other fucking problems. I was about to say, all those problems dissipate. Yes. 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 <laughs> exactly. It's, it's more, it's more, you know, what is it? Uh, Puff Daddy and Mace, more money, more problems. Like, uh, or was um, it? Yeah, it was Mace. Yeah. Uh, Drewby coming in with a great suggestion. Just no. become a magic card reseller. No, I know two people here locally, just here where I live in my small popcorn fart of fucking Florida town who had a magic store and within three years shuttered that bitch because it couldn't make any fucking money in it. So Well, it's it can't be a local business. It, you have to be doing online. That's the only way I think you can do this shit regularly. Mm. You have to have a large on, online. Although the thought of Six becoming like uh, the pawn stars of magic cards is fucking <laughs> hilarious to me. Yeah, because I, I mean, I can't stenchy, stand. Oh, dude, Stenchy could become your Chumley. No, <laughs> he could be my Chumley. I can't. I can't stand <laughs> magic nerds. All right, I can't be around them. I love playing magic. <laughs> I'm a big fan of magic. Huge fan. Love playing paper magic. Cannot stand magic nerds. Can't be around them. You went to a magic convention yep. ostensibly for five days and yep. tapped out after ninety minutes. Yeah, I was there. I was at the magic con for literally like eighty-five minutes, where I was like, you know what, guys, you you want to play some magic games? Uh, let me know back at the casino resort, okay? I'm going back to fucking lose some more money at the casino. Peace out. Right. <laughs> you don't want to accidentally catch Virgin and Cheeto dust. <laughs> Damn. And the smell. <laughs> it was in an airport hangar. Like, it was in an aircraft hangar, the con. Oh, no. Even Not even air-conditioned? Yeah, oh, it was air-conditioned. But even oh. with the giant space, the, the waft of uh, the virgin nerds just, oh, God, choked me out, man. I was like, couldn't and handle it. And, of course, they, they were all playing mono black, so everything all swamp. Yeah, the all swamps, all swamps. Everybody oh, just, just swamping it. Yeah, it's really the aura that makes it suffocating. <laughs> It's true. Uh, I like Lord Drewby's role play. You got a Black Lotus and you need 600000 Best I can do is $400 and, and three yeah, islands. That's right. Best I can do is $400. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. So it's like, okay, my, my one option, this is my first option. I can just suck it up, fucking uh, pull myself up on my bootstraps, have no social life whatsoever outside of streaming once or twice on the weekends. And and make the most money I've ever made in my entire life. Continue to bankroll my money because right now I have a good amount of savings, guys. I, you know, right now at this point in time, like I said, I don't care. I'll fucking put all my business out there. Like I got 80k liquid, like just liquid. I could walk away right now, the 80k, like totally fine, not a problem. Uh, it's the most money I've ever had in my entire life. But it's like right. I could bootstrap it for the next eight to ten years. I could run this business for the next eight to 10 years. Why is he investing in liquid? I'm hoarding water, Vicer. All right, it's Florida. You got to hoard water here. We don't know what's going to happen next year. He's investing in liquid because solid and gaseous aren't aren't viable right now. The, the stocks are low. <laughs> Nestle 6. <laughs> so I, if I bootstrap it for another eight to 10 years, 
I, I can walk away, basically have retirement for my life, my life. I don't live a very luxurious life. I live a very meager existence, as Joey said right. once upon a time. Really fucking shook me, stuck with me for a very long time. Like, I live a meager existence. I don't need a lot to make me happy. All the things that make me happy, I already own or they do not cost money. So, like, right. if I go another eight to ten years, I could bankroll probably about close to half a million like 500k like if i do if i live as i'm living right now and so like yeah no i know it wasn't a criticism i i i understand i got you brother like so it's like 500k half a million i could i could make that last quite some time me so that's my first option just fucking suck it up and maybe do as joey said maybe like cut down some of my crybabies cut down some of the route yeah, I think that is actually the most sensible suggestion that I've thought that you know that I've heard since you've brought up this whole thing is why not just take a third of your troublesome accounts, get rid of them and try to see how things go with that. Uh Drewby, that's also another ensuing inflation doesn't get you, you gotta invest in stonks. I, I do need to invest my money, like just have a retirement plan. Just cause like look, even this eighty K that I've been other than like some trivial expenses, like, you know, uh, give Antonio four times the amount of money that he fucking asked me for quoting right. for uh, digital art, basically just giving Antonio a scholarship, <laughs> a six month scholarship for life. Like I don't like I, you're not investing in stocks. You're investing in intangible art that doesn't exist yet. Oh, we got cheap viewers <laughs> on on Cutley. Hell yeah, we got our first spam right here. Oh, yeah, you deleted Woo! them. You got them. Ah, oh, we could have yeah, used it. We got it. spammers. I need look at us growing. We, oh. we we got we got content struck on YouTube. We got demonetized. <laughs> now we're getting spammers. Damn, I didn't pin it fast enough. Ah oh, man, I wanted a hundred Indian <laughs> followers, man. That's what I wanted like shit bro we could have grown um so it's like i could do that i could cut down my biz but the problem is if i cut down my biz i i'm not going to make as much profit so basically at that point i would just be working to kind of like sustain you know like the the allure to working myself to death is obviously the fact that it, at the end of the eight to ten years in which i'm in business i'll have half a million dollars in retirement if i cut down the business by 20 to 30 percent i will not have that much in retirement it's not that much of a difference with money because like i said i live a pretty meager existence i don't need a whole bunch of money to operate i basically only need 2200 dollars a month for living expenses because right. that's, that's basically what i've been doing working but if, the you business go, now. if you go through and you cut 30 accounts or whatever it is you'll have more free time and maybe you won't feel like you're working yourself to death yeah oh and by the way i'm looking up here at the what is it the the bits and the donos list it does look like Viser has paid you 210 <laughs> cents to go through and make the gifts larger in chat <laughs> yeah that's funny. he's now he's now the king of the ass pennies <laughs> That's what Viser was doing. He was he was gigantifying all the emotes yesterday. He was having a ball. I was having a ball to be honest with you. I was just like a, a boomer that was amazed by technology. <laughs> it's just like it's better that was, now, and I get paid for it. What? I was like, why are you was, bitching about that this? That was amazed by getting pennies with moving triangles. So yeah. That way, pictures can move in chat and be bigger. <laughs> So, so that's the first option. The the pros to that option, the uh, I'm set pretty much for life at the end of it, eight to ten years. Like I don't have to worry about well, expenses. Uh, well, me in my mind, I'm set for life. Like <laughs> right. I'm set for like another eight to ten years. So, like basically is what it boils down to. I'll figure it out eight to ten years. The cons for that life choice is I'm beating the shit out of my body. Look, yeah. my business, it's not super labor intensive. All right. I'm not going to put myself on the same tier as fucking laying uh, asphalt, you know, road asphalt or roofing or, you know, actual real manual labor. But it does beat the shit out of your body. You're doing a lot of fucking uh, kinesthetic movements all day long, every day. And like my wrists, I know it's a it, and I <laughs> It's the funniest thing in the world. It's just like, I'm out here as a manual laborer and I'm just like, ah, beating the shit out of myself and whatnot and fucking, <laughs> I'm like, oh, the injuries I have, my wrists. <laughs> it's like, my wrists are falling apart, Oh, you know? Which sounds really, 
It sounds really like, okay, okay, brother. Like, but to be honest with you, I need my wrists. <laughs> like, I kind of need them. If I can't pick up a video game controller or play magic or write, that kind of sucks. I don't, you know, yeah, exactly, Joey. Don't downplay that shit. Come with structural issue. I don't want to be, you know, in my 70s and I can't fucking pick up anything or open a fucking bottle of Pepsi, you know? Yeah, I need it yeah. for the 16 month drought, jerking oh. off. Yeah, oh yeah, jacking off. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, that's a little rough. Okay, so that's option one. The option two, which, all right, this is my other option. All right, so I I quit the business, I shut out the business, and uh, you're still pretty drunk right now, <laughs> Vicer. You were on VR chat, so I was like, he must be hammering them down if he's on VR chat. Um, <laughs> My my second option, okay, is I shutter the business February, April, somewhere around there. February, April. Six. Specifically before the summer months started. Yeah, I ain't doing another summer. <laughs> it's like, a, I don't want to if I don't have to. Like, the second option is basically shutter and uh, I'll save a little bit more money. I'll have probably another 40K liquid in the kitty. And so by the time I started the business, I'll have like 120K liquid. Uh, after taxes, probably 100K after taxes. And I'm just guesstimating, I don't fucking know. The other option is, all right, uh, uh, Meemaw, not Meemaw, uh, the... Mammal? Mammal, the, the Pool Omega, <laughs> Pool Omega. Pool Omega. Uh, yeah. She, she doesn't even like pools. <laughs> <laughs> is uh mom wants me to move back up to nuggetsville big time like mom I mean, she's a well no i'm i'm nuggetsville she's snacksville snacksville mom wants me to move back to snacksville very bad our our mother ever since me and beef got to adult age empty nest has beat the shit out of oh, our mother yeah, yeah. that's and why then, that's why she has 400 animals whatever uh anything that she Mom has to be taking care of something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It doesn't if it's children, if it's grandkids, if it's you know family members. She has to be taking care of something. The problem is, as soon as she gets it moved in, or as soon as she has the responsibility to take, she fucking hates it. Yeah. Oh yeah. She's just like me. Like she's mom is. I was. I, I was born miserable. <laughs> All right, and I get that from mom. So like, right. mom. She will find something that she really loves and then within two years wants to eject out of it because she hates obligations. So, uh, Joey, I'm about three hours down the road from Tooth Omega. Yeah. <laughs> like, so mom wants me to move back to Snacksville. Mom has like uh, 11 acres of land and she, she lives on a farm. Right. And she, we came up with the idea, just spitballing, we will fucking uh, get a tiny house build a tiny house you can build uh, you can buy them prefab i don't want a prefab because prefab tiny houses something tells me that they're not going to hold up i don't know just something about well, you can you can get 3d printed tiny houses that actually <laughs> look decently constructed something tells me about uh by paying twenty three thousand dollars to home depot for them to deliver a box that unfolds that you live in it something tells me that it doesn't have long-term endurance like you can you can get them at costco now <laughs> So oh, I would uh, the, theoretically under option two, I would build a tiny house. I would get a contractor, a builder to make a tiny house, just a just a normal house, just very small scale. And it'd be like 250 to 300 square feet. I don't need a lot of space. I don't like even in my apartment right now, like I, I have a two <laughs> two bed, two bath, two bedroom, two bath. It's like 800 square feet. To be honest with you, I only use two rooms. I only use one room and one bathroom. Like, it's just, I don't need a lot of space to live. I just don't. Like, I'm a minimalist. I don't have a bunch of material possessions. I have fucking 300 booster magic packs. And I have a stream computer and a bed and a TV. That's basically all I have to my, and my, right. my exercise equipment. Those 300 booster uh, magic packs back there, uh, Joey, that's his 401k. Yeah, basically. Yeah. I mean, I did open up a $90 card the other day, so I was like, ooh. ooh. How much did you pay for the pack? Uh, five bucks. 
So I mean, dude, that's that's uh, that's eighteen times your money. That's eighteen hundred percent. Four hundred one k cards. <laughs> Four hundred one cards. Are you yeah, serious, like Joey? Eight hundred square feet is smaller than your shipping container. Wow, bro. I'm living ritzy here in Florida. This is this this two bed two bath. Uh, 800 square feet is about 1700 a month in rent and right. like that's that's good and that's cheap here in Florida like now six uh, to give you perspective do you remember my Chattanooga bachelor hovel yeah oh yeah yeah do you, do you want to describe it for the people real quick uh, it was a hallway with a bathroom at the end of it <laughs> I mean basically <laughs> I had was. one long living room slash bedroom slash dining room slash kitchen slash laundry room and then a separate bathroom so that Chattanooga hovel that was 325 square feet I mean but at the time what beef was living in it, I could Man. live there like beef could live in there I mean beef literally I mean, had pizza boxes uh, for furniture like I lived there for 3 years I had and I would go back and forth from the radio station to my to my little fucking studio apartment or whatever the whatever it's supposed to be called wow and that cost me like 340 bucks a month at the time mm. nowadays it's probably 780 or whatever it is oh, it's, yeah it's a lot more now yeah. yeah but it worked. We, Six and I couldn't live on very little space. Even now, married with kids and a house, and uh, sustainable the, the stuff that's actually my shit. Like this, this belongs to Beefy. It, it could fit in like one corner of the house. It, pr it pretty much does. The shit that you see around me is my stuff. Yeah, that's, that's it. it. Yeah. And also, you're you're married, so <laughs> right. like this. you got no no room for your own personal life anymore. Like. Ah, uh, what's going on, Johnny Naz? Like, I didn't see you there, brother. My first apartment was 800 square feet back when I had nothing. John, you told me what you're paying for your house, and I literally wanted to fucking suicide myself just listening to it. I was just like, no well, wonder John feels stressed all the fucking time. John, can I reveal, or do you want to reveal how much you pay for your mortgage a month? Is that okay? I don't want to. I don't want to cross any lines. Like you know, I don't want to. I don't mind outing myself and all my business, but I don't want to out other people's business. You know, so right. I'll, well, I'll wait till John says. I can give you a little bit of an insight here because we tried to go shopping for houses three years ago. We had like forty grand in the bank uh, ready for a down payment to go through and go buy a house. And houses we were looking at, oh my god, well on a lake, yeah, lakefront property. John, forty five hundred a month mortgage on a three thousand square foot on the lake. That's actually fucking good. That's a fucking prison, bro. You're in prison. <laughs> oh man, you're in a really nice prison. So we it's on were. A lake. Uh, it's on a lake, though. <laughs> so easy, easy body disposal. Yeah. Um, we uh, you know, just, just after he sucked it dry and the, the cadavers there, you don't want to build up a morgue in your lake house. You got to dispose of them somehow. Um, so we were looking for houses and houses that we need for our site. We need five bedrooms. And the house that we were looking at started at like 375 for our area in the school district we wanted. They were like, okay, super cheap. This could make sense. Uh, that year was 2019. Uh -huh. What else happened in 2019 and 2020 to fuck up the world? COVID. COVID hit, and <clears throat> all the people working lumber yards got sick, and wood stopped being produced, and trees died, and all of a sudden houses go from 375, and we watched the exact same houses jump up to $600,000 in the span of nine months. Holy shit. And, uh, nope, we're just renting forever now. Yeah, oh yeah. That's, and that, uh, I mean, we're taking a little side topic here, but we were talking a couple weeks ago about the, because Beef now, Beef and his wife, Mrs. Beef, they they have good jobs, good paying jobs. Yes, and uh, they, they, they thought they would never be to a point where they're making six figures and they're still just living paycheck to paycheck, just, just yeah, making it, six figures to get by. It is the weirdest thing because we kept getting approved for new mortgage amounts. Like, oh, you need three fifty to buy a house. Fine. Okay, here's a letter. You need four hundred thousand to buy a house. Fine. Here's a letter. You need five hundred thousand to buy a house. Fine. Here's a letter. We got up to where we had five hundred fifty thousand dollars in buying power. Could not find a fucking house. <laughs> How does that work? <laughs> I mean. You yeah, know, granted, we, we had to sign all the checks, Mrs. and Mr. Beef, so I don't know if that had a problem with our with our proposal.
down. Hey, However, thanks. thanks for the follow, Swing. I'm a big fan, big fan. I'm, I'm glad you beat the charges, brother. I'm glad you beat the charges. Oh, uh, your uh, the I your know. follow thing came I in know. behind the low. Okay, I know. I'm, sure I'm saw, fixing. Uh, it. Keep keep talking. Keep talking. Uh, you you. I saw six physically twitch and the veins start to pop out of his neck. So I'm like, oh, what happened? What went wrong? <laughs> no, it's, oh, it's fine. So, it's fine. Um. One thing you got to watch out for is there is the, the shipping container thing, and it still gets fucking hot here in Tennessee, dude. I don't want you to get roasted. Oh, Lord. That's okay. So, if I buy a tiny house, plop it down on mom's property. Yes. Uh, estimating probably like 45K just to build the house. And right. and then probably another 15K for electric, water, sewage, uh, cable, extra ventilation, and extra um, insulation. So probably another 15K. So looking at 60K, probably. That's highball estimate, too. Now, that's if the cable company is willing to go out there to work, because what are they going to do with your piddly 10 grand or whatever to try and build a new cable line into the area to run it to you? They they may not want to take on the, the the pain in the ass of it, and you don't know what sort of time frame that they would be working on. It's true. Like it is that is that's because I told mom straight up. I was like, mom, if there ain't no fucking cable internet, it's a deal breaker. I ain't fucking going there. I was just yeah, like, they, look. Um, I I had to be over at Tooth Alpha uh, Tooth of the Omega's uh fucking farm because um my uh, our, our stepdad had some heart issues so i'm like running across the the state to, to help out mom and be over there with her and man their internet is ass they've got yeah john they've got uh elon link they've got uh, the starlink. Lusknet. starlink they've got that shit and it's fucking garbage yeah like i i literally slept in a horse trailer for two days and my phone could not get any signal whatsoever off of any wi-fi <laughs> there is absolute trash out there i just like that sentence i was living in a horse trailer for two days <laughs> yeah. i mean they didn't have they didn't have their barn house built they so they got to live in the regular person trailer i got the horse trailer <laughs> with all the with all the livestock animals it makes sense like oh it, no no we moved the livestock <laughs> out and they, i got to poop in the straw for a few days <laughs> So 60K, uh, and as Joey's talking about in the chat, because, like, look, you can make all the estimations that you want, but when right. you're building a house, there are a... Sh I'm sure John can talk about it. I'm sure there are a lot of hidden costs that you do not anticipate. But yes. for this thought experiment, we'll say 60K. All right, so take 60K to move and build a tiny home on mom's property that leaves me with 60K left over. And yeah. so essentially under that, under that, you know, kind of situation, I would have 60K to live off of and with no rent payment, like I would have no rent payment. My living expenses month to month, probably in the realm of like eight to nine hundred dollars. Like I said, I don't live luxuriously, so it, it, right. it'd probably be like eight to nine hundred dollars a month, eight to nine hundred dollars a month. That gives me about two, two point five years where I don't have to work at all. Like I'm done. Don't have to work. Like, and that's, and that's the goal. Like I kind of want, cause like in my entire life, like I'm a creative person. Like I need creative projects to feel happy. And right. like any time in my life where I haven't had a creative project, I get very depressed. I get very miserable. I'm a, I'm a son of a bitch to be around when it happens. And so like, oh, I mean, uh, uh, t time out. <laughs> Only when you don't have a creative project. <laughs> you were fucking miserable this morning. It's like, why is Firefox not working? Where's the volume? What the fuck? That's that's just everyday misery, though. That's like I mean, that's... beef. Beef is the real me because, like, I, I've known beef the longest. I don't have to fucking put on airs for beef. I let no. beef see all the ugliness that I am as a yeah. human being because I don't give a fuck. What is right. beef gonna do? Disown me? Okay. I, I mean, six and I weren't friends <laughs> until no. like 15, 10, 15 years ago. Yeah, we uh, <laughs> I mean, we we, 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 we tolerated each other. Yeah. We grew up hating each other. We were not good brothers. <laughs> so, like, do you it think just you're good took, at It just took a little growing up. That's all it took. Yeah, well, what happened is life beat the shit out of both of us. And now yeah. we're to the point where we're just like, okay, you feel that way about it? Good for you, brother. Moving on to the next <laughs> subject. Like, right. So, if the problem is with that plan 
is, yeah, 60K for a tiny house. But the problem is I would need to get a vehicle. I would need to get a new vehicle because guess yep. what? The pool truck ain't going to fucking make it to Snacksville. OK, it could barely well, make it around here town. So it's just like let me let me tell you, buddy, between um, between Florida and uh, Snacksville. I, I, I know some people in uh, Tallapusta that can get you a Choriota tea house. <laughs> a Choriota tea house. <laughs> yeah, get yourself a Chevy Tahoe. You know, As a just... matter of fact, it's represented in the logo right there on the bottom. <laughs> That's right. Actually, actual photo from the lot of our family. Franken truck. Like... <laughs> Some floor dance. That's right. I'll never be a floor dance. So, like, buying a new car or a truck, one or the other, uh, you're looking at pff, stock. Just stock. I would probably get a pickup truck because that way I could pivot to some other manual labor business if I ever really needed to. Yeah, so you could pivot to doing pool work in Tennessee. Yeah, for real. So, looking at like 40, 40K stock. So, under the tiny home concept and premise, 100k of my savings ate out up. the door out the door yeah. just to just to set up you know and that leaves me with 20k left over and i'm just like uh, uh. it was like the whole concept well, of shuttering the business and having more free time to work on creative projects is so i can shutter the business and have more time to work on creative projects if i take this option then, you know, as Vice you're saying, I only have like enough money maybe for a year of just loafing and being creative. And then I have to go find a fucking job making and then you'll way have, less. And then you'll have a very good year where you'll get a lot of creative stuff done. And who knows, you might get a, you might write your book that takes off or you might go through and uh, you know, get ca get caught streaming and, you know, hey, get super popular as long as we don't keep demonetizing your Twitch and money accounts. But... <laughs> What do you do after that year if none of that comes in? Yeah, yeah. Like, that's, it's risky. It's risky. And, like, look, I've never been a person that's aversive to risk, but as I get older, you that's know. That's very risky. <laughs> I mean, that's very risky, Chief. I, as I get older, I'm just like, man, do I really want to be making big, risky decisions as I approach my 40s, you know? I'm just like, I don't want to be working a fucking dead end job in my 40s you know i don't i don't want to do that like I, i've worked a lot of dead end fucking jobs i've worked a lot of shitty ass fucking jobs i'm tired of it i was like i, I work this shitty ass and fucking job that i'm working now that makes me sacrifice all my free time and my energy but because i make good money you know like right. i'm so i'm basically sacrificing my life for a so short amount to, of time do you want to sacrifice all your time and your energy to make less money that's the other thing is like I would have more of a support network like the emotional the the emotional choices in that aspect is that I think you don't want to go back to being poor six. It's true. Vice, you're very right. And if you fuck this up, that is the fate. Yep. You are correct, sir. It's very risky. Now, John very is risky. right. You you could go back to organizing magazines at Kroger to go through and supplement your cost of living. <laughs> but then you're working again. <laughs> Take it from I mean, a board again, poor. Oh, you don't want to be poor again. You are correct, Joey. I don't. I do not. Poor. Uh, yes, a poor again. I do. Th that is right. Uh, that's been my point on the entire thing, and that's why I supported this episode. Because I, I will support Six on whichever he wants to do. It's his life. It's his decision. I'm his brother. If he wants to do it, then hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get behind him and back him on it. That doesn't necessarily mean I think it's the best decision for him, but it's also his life. So I'm not going to go through it and try to, you know, big dick my way into making it happen the way I think it should happen. It's his thing. But that's kind of why I was happy to do this show, because I had a feeling that between Vicer and John and Joey and Drewby and everybody else coming in, a lot of them would say a lot of the same shit that I've been saying. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, the, the, Vicer's right. Six will make the decision he thinks is right. Like, Correct. that's what I've done my entire life. I get advice. Like, I accept right. advice. And then I just cherry and pick. And then ignore all yeah, of them. Yeah, I cherry pick <laughs> the 2% that I like and then fucking discard the rest, you know? like. See, that's... I told y'all Six goes to church. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the emotional oh, aspects the, the 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 pros to that option would be like because i was explaining it to mom like 
I, I've never been a person that's been intimately, the, 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 I have to watch my phrasing on that one. I've never been a person yep. who's been intimately linked with my family. I'm always kind of like at arm's length with my family. I'll see you when I see you. But like, well, sure. but now as I'm getting older, I'm kind of like, I was like, Beef was talking about his kids, my nieces and nephews. And I'm just like, man, I kind of don't like the fact that I'm not able to see my family grow up. I'm not able to be a part of my family. I'm not able to, you know, take part in any of that because I live too far away and I can't get up there on vacation. Like, it's impossible. Right. I can never. That's the con for the first aspect of the business is I can never take off for any reason, period. Like, I get one week a year. That's it. Off. That's it. That's the only time I get off. Like. Well, you could, it would take experimentation, it would take a little working. It, you, you would have to work a little bit harder to go through and get the time off. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Vicer, what would I do in his shoes? I would break them. I have big feet. Uh, his, are, <laughs> his are tiny. Um, the laces don't. <laughs> I, oh, damn it, I almost got the spit take on. Yeah, I had water in my mouth. Was ready. I almost had it. Damn it. <laughs> um, no, um... If it were me, I think I would try to rebalance instead of burn the whole thing down. Mm. Something that y'all may or may not know about Six is he is either an all or nothing person. Oh, he yeah. is not good <laughs> no. at gray area. No. It is he likes he likes the you know, just it is either all of one thing or it's all of another thing. Yeah. He he is not so much good for compromise. No. Mm -mm. Um, now, sometimes you you give him something and he'll process it and he'll come around to it, which he has done very well at with. He's done. He has grown up in that way. There are times where he'll sit there and yell at me and gripe at me, and then about an hour later, text back, "Hey, I'm sorry. That yeah, oh, yeah. I'm I, yeah. I just feeling shitty today, and I took it out on you. Yeah. Those are actually good ideas. I'm just negative to everything right now. Yeah. Oh, that's literally like, every bro down for the last <laughs> six six weeks. Like. <laughs> um. But it just takes some time to process things, and things like this, where it's us chatting with y'all and him group thinking things, will help him with that. Um, the one thing that he hasn't put into the kitty yet either, and I'm going to start this off with a little bit of story from uh, Beefy here. When we could not buy a house in our area, um, uh, Mouth Alpha, so Ma, came to us and um, asked if we wanted to help her buy some land that was near her land. Um, we had the money we were going to go through and get onto the mortgage uh, so that we could buy 100 acres of land around their land, and they were going to have a full-fledged farm out there in Snacksville. And we were well into the process. We had signed up for mortgages and got pre-approval letters. And a week before the original deal got, we had to buy an, another car. So I went and bought the vehicle that I'm now driving. That was only dinged up, by the way, because my college-age son rammed my old car into my new car, and that was a double stinger for the ages. But because I bought that new car, which I had approved with the original mortgage company, the auditors said, oh, that's a red flag, cancel the whole fucking deal. And because we bought a car and we're co-signing with my parents, they literally killed a 100-acre land deal. Ooh. That would have been worth seven figures uh, by the time it's done with everything. Ooh. I tell you all that to tell you this. Mm -hmm. It was a blessing that that got canceled because nine months after... Our stepdad was diagnosed with a condition where his brain randomly stops his lungs from breathing. Myasthenius gravis. That. And he has terrible days, and he can't run a farm. Yeah, he's turning he, into Mokujin from Tekken. Basically. Yeah. He is so... Can you imagine if, oh, by the way, now I'm on the hook with my parents for 100 acres of land for half a million dollars, mm -hmm. and now they can't work it, and mm -hmm. I live the entire state away from them. Mm -hmm. So, that was a blessing in disguise. Mm -hmm. I tell you all that to tell you this. One thing Six may have not considered and put to y'all is what happens if he puts his tiny house on M M Mouth Alpha's land 
And stepdad decides to up and kick the bucket because I have been over running across the state two or three times in the last few years to help mom because stepdad is in the hospital with sepsis or mm. not breathing mm -hmm. or a heart attack. What happens if he passes, mom can't work the land anymore, and now you're just a tiny house on a property that she has to sell? Yeah. That's that is that is definitely the con to this option because that's that's a, that's almost the biggest con as you can't get internet and you can't stream anymore. Because when I worked for Pool Alpha for six years, I I am to a point in my life where I'm just like I want no tethers to my parents, none. Like I I love my parents to death. Like mom is more of a traditional type, uh, good old Christian country lady. That's fine. Dad has always been like, oh, you're 10 years old. You're on your own. You're an adult now. We don't need right. don't, my job here is done. Dad has always been more of a, a friendly roommate than a father. Like and but I don't want to be tied to either one of them. And I feel like if I live on the property, mom, she'll say all the things in the world. No, no, I'll give you space. We know how you are. You're an antisocial hermit. <laughs> we get it. So we'll, we'll give you your space. But I know how parents are like they will right. th slowly but surely gradually over a long period of time or a short period of time. I will become obligated to them. And I don't want to be obligated to anybody, literally anybody, let alone my father parents like and um just because we're playing the amazing jekyll brothers here i'm gonna throw one more ball into the sin juggle um our grandmother is oh, now yeah. living on mom's property because she is just wrought with the dementia and doesn't recognize a whole lot of things and forgets a whole bunch and she's been getting passed around between her five kids and now it's mom's turn, and yeah. mom has moved her into a trailer on the property. Yep. And I have a very sneaking suspicion that a good part of wanting Six to come up and live on the property is to help take care of Dimension Grandma. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. Mom, uh, Meme, our grandmother. By the way, Meme, I've talked about her in other OTLs and Super RPG Friends. Meme is the grandmother that uses apple cider vinegar for deodorant. Meme yes. is the grandmother that had literally three entire rooms stacked with 12 feet tall VHS tapes of shit that she just recorded yes. on daytime of television. soap operas. Yeah. Soap operas. Yeah. Like so, and never washed them. So it's just oh, like. Oh, wait, no, no. I've got one to add to your list. I went up to visit uh, mom a while ago, and I, uh, this was when Meme was living in a trailer park near them. This was when the dementia was first coming on, and all of a sudden she decides she wants to go for a drive and got lost for 18 hours. <laughs> so that was an issue. So I went to go visit Meme in her trailer, and um, we're just hanging out, and she she remind, she remembered me some, so that's nice. Uh -huh. um, but nowadays, this is the point where she knows she has a daughter but doesn't remember that it's mom. No. Uh -uh. Um, so... I went over to Meme's house, and Meme said, hey, let's get dinner. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, sure, let's go. There's a, there's an Applebee's nearby. Let's we'll, we'll find some other cheap... No, I'll make you dinner. That's great. And my shits did not recover for three weeks. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't because trust Meme's cooking. No. The dinner that Meme made was loose patties of something that she pulled out of a chest freezer. And so I assume it was some kind of mystery meat. They weren't in any fucking plastic covering. They weren't in a package. It was literally just you know, somewhat circular with paper put on them, stuffed in the freezer and just put on the bottom. She went into her cabinets and pulled out a random can of Campbell's something. I think it was cream of mushroom soup. And then went through and started cutting some mushrooms and tried to make some jank-ass Salisbury steak, except it was fucking creamy, and don't know what the meat was. Oh. And me, no. being polite, and also fat, hate it. <laughs> and that was a mistake. <laughs> we have... Uh, I told mom about this afterwards. Uh, we have no idea how long she's been hoarding that food. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. She had she had like four freezers in there. We 
no idea what it was, oh, how long it had been there, how long it had been out of the packaging, how long it had been stuck to the bottom of the freezer. And I had noticed that Meme had been losing a lot of weight. She used to be big and hefty, and she's de you know decently skinny now. Part of the reason is she forgets to eat, and I'm sure the other part is when she does eat, it's so terrible that she wants to stop. God. This is... I'll give you guys some insight. In Snacksville, Meme used to shop at a place called Uggos. It's U-G-O's. Uggos. U-G-O. Yes. Uggo stands for United Grocers Outlet. What that is, guys, they take all the expired food from supermarkets oh. and they resell it. And, oh, and she yeah. literally had just cans of botulism from fucking 1983 just hanging out in her fucking. She just goes and buys a bunch of expired food. And you guys think he's being hyperbolic. No, it's literally it just says botulism with the Quaker Oats logo. It just says botulism <laughs> right across there. It's it's good old fashioned Mennonite botulism. Now 30 percent more botulism like yeah. it is. So that's why I was like, oh, I don't I don't get anywhere near Meme's cooking. Not at all. Mm -mm. No, no, I no. don't anymore. No. And th that was the time I was sleeping in the horse trailer. So I needed that straw. I mean, oh, man. So I, I, well, I've told mom under no certain terms, by the way, chat, you were blowing me up and laughing my ass off at you guys. <laughs> like, I'm sorry for ignoring you, but I'm trying to get through this last part so we can get to the wrestling segment and then get to Pentiment. We're going to do some Pentiment. Um, Mennonite botulism. <laughs> <laughs> so that I've told mom under no certain terms, I will not be taking care of Meme. And I've told both my parents after taking care of a woman for Alzheimer's and dementia for five years straight, yeah. you all better have a fucking exit plan. I ain't taking care of you. It ain't happening. Yeah, because um, Six took care of stepdad's mom for the end of her life for five years. Oh, living caregiver, they'll never fucking do it ever again. The worst part, literally the worst years of my life. The, I'm honestly surprised you did it the first time because that woman was fucking miserable no oh, she was a cunt <laughs> like she oh. was she was a cunt before the diagnosis and then when you have alzheimer's and dementia you lose social inhibitions so the things like, that you would never say to another human being because you're you know being another nice social person those go away when you have alzheimer's and dementia so she became an even bigger cunt I mean, I had to rescue a cat from that house. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. How many cats did she kill? And I had to, I, and I, I had to rescue one. Yeah, brother. Like, oh man. Like, so I told her under no certain terms, am I taking care of anybody? So that's option two. I don't know if that's really the option. Tonio, my graphic artist slash attorney slash life coach, he was like, bro. He's like, move to Tennessee. Or, whoops, I'm sorry. Everybody knows I used to live in Tennessee. Move to Snacksville. Right. Like, uh, but he's like, don't buy a fucking tiny home. What the fuck is wrong with you? Just get an apartment. So like he. Well, that, that that's. But that's the thing though. Now you're adding responsibilities on top of. And yes. That, so that's the uh, third option. Third yeah. option: shutter the business in February or April. Move back to Snacksville. Live in Snacksville, not in a tiny home, though. Just live in an apartment, just a normal ass apartment. That way I'm close to the family. I get to see uh, my nieces and nephews every now and then. I could travel three hours to Beef's property. But I'm never going to do that. But, <laughs> right. like, you know, like I could just live in an apartment. If I live in an apartment, I have to go back to paying rent. My monthly expenses would probably be like... I don't know, 2,500. At, at least double or treble. Yeah, 2,500. It'd probably be 20. Uh, Snacksville apartments are cheaper than Florida apartments. So you, you, when's the last time you looked? Uh, two days ago. All right then. Yeah, you're yeah. Right. They're they're way cheaper in Florida. Uh, it costs way. Ch I mean, Florida fucking it's expensive to live anywhere. Like, yeah, Joey, you're right. It is cheaper to live in Snacksville. It's because nobody wants to live in Snacksville. Um, it, it would be cheaper in Snacksville, but you're also giving up any of your income. Yeah, that's that's the other side. Is that like, OK, yes. at that point, clock is ticking. If I'm going to make any money with creative projects, I got two, two and a half years to fucking get that shit going. And that's a big risk because, like, look, I feel like me. I know me. I, every creative goal I have ever set for myself, I have attained, knocked it out of the park. Every single one, except for the novel. That's the only one I haven't fucking completed, but that's the one that yes, I would complete. You have time. Yeah, exactly. So I would have more free time. I'd be able to basically travel if I wanted to travel. I do want to travel. Like, dude, I'm screaming at my phone. <laughs> 
<laughs> like, you right. know. Right. Is he screaming at his phone, listening to you trying to talk yourself into giving it all up? Is that what it is? Probably. Like I, That's what I'm betting. And so I, I could live for about two, two and a half years off my savings and 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 just live you know be able to i would have to find the next thing to make me money and in my mind idyllically i would want it to be streaming and or writing i know realistically probably not going to happen but i would still right. try like just to see if i could do it i'm pretty sure i could but i would still joey, try uh, joey you're out there saying the exact thing i was yelling at six when it was when his car went down or the truck went down like just give yourself free time <laughs> just just take a week off tell them hey put more chlorine in it if you want mm-hmm. however i'm not here for a week i i don't bill you for 4 weeks out of the year and i still work them so i need to go through and stop that that's the hard part and john was talking about it earlier in chat and we'll circle back to john john said just make sure that you have a couple of weeks off for yourself during the year guys in a regular normal business you can do that pool service is not a normal fucking regular business it doesn't work like that because just the three days that i had to take off because my truck fucking broke couldn't i couldn't physically work my truck was broken in the three days that that happened, I was like, okay, I'm going to do all my troublemaker pools. I'm going to do all my problem children just to have them done because I know I have to fucking visit them. I have no choice. Can't take off. I took off one week for the remainder of those clients. Every single pool that I went to was green and or yellow growing. And not only was a green and or yellow growing, fucking like clients are pissing in my ear they're pissed off about it because everybody's using the fucking pool because it's summer and then on top of that i had to work my ass off further more than i normally do just to get them back into shape and then on top of that had to spend more money in chemical just to get it back so it cost me money to take time off so it's not it's not a normal business like i cannot i can take one week off a year in Christmas because it's winter and people aren't usually swimming and because it's Christmas I'm fucking taking off I don't give a shit what happens to your fucking pool fuck your pool like right. but it's just like it's not a normal business you can't take off vacation time it's impossible I I think it is possible I just don't think you know how to do it yet I it is possible I could get an employee that's the other option however you get an employee you have to pay them a minimum $20 an hour which give them even a half make them halfway give a shit because employees don't give a shit and i know this right. because i was working under pool alpha i was an employee i didn't give a shit didn't give a shit <laughs> not even remotely gave a shit like because i was just like pool alpha's problem not mine i'm getting the fuck out of here i'm collecting my 2200 dollars a month like i see i would put it as you need to it's not just a black and white thing, which is kind of where you're couching it at. Oh, yeah, I can never take vacation. Well, you can, and it's going to suck a little bit around it. But because you also mentioned that, oh, I took three days off and everything went to shit. You also took three days off in Florida summer after Memorial Day when everybody has been using their pools for yeah. the last... It, know, it, was, it was bad timing. The worst three <laughs> yeah. days to possibly yeah. take off. It was bad timing. Everybody was swimming the fuck out of their pools during Memorial I, Week. I mean, it's almost like the you know, the you one of the criti- one of the criticisms of Passion of the Christ is, oh, you're going to take a movie about Jesus and just uh, the worst three days of his life. <laughs> why, why not just make a movie about Einstein and do the three days that he had amoebic dysentery and was shitting his brains out the whole time? <laughs> The, th- the three days where uh, Einstein crawled under his living room rug and cranked one out by himself. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, it, you you don't want to color everything based on the absolute worst three days to have possibly taken a vacation at your job. It is. But even if uh, in the summertime, you cannot take time off. It's impossible. You can't. Like, even outside of Memorial Day. Like, just to give you an example. Okay, so that one week, three days, took three days off. The following week, this week, we got fucking eight inches of rain. <laughs> so yep. I've been working my ass off all this week just to fucking balance pools because we got eight inches of fucking rain. So it's just like, <laughs> so can't, can't win. W- what if you worked out something where you don't take any time off during the summer because you can't? No. And you did a like a 
like a week in October or a week in February that you took off Maybe. where where it's kind of off season and still incorporate the excising the 30 worst pools you have <laughs> Like, just take a hatchet to the absolute... All of your problem children out the fucking door. Mm. Just tell them, I'm not dealing with this shit anymore. Reduce your workload. You're going to reduce your pay, Big and it'll take you... But, you'll, but how much more life will you earn back getting rid of the 30 biggest problem children out, out, off your route? That's that's the hard part. It's the, like, I wouldn't make any profit. I'd basically just be living month to month working a business so i'd have granted i would have less stress but i would still have the same amount of stress the same kind of stressors for basically living paycheck to paycheck and if you're well, if you're running a fucking business you need to be making profit if you ain't making profit why the fuck are you running a business well you will still be making profit just because you're making 40 pools in profit doesn't mean if you get rid of 30 pools you automatically just drop down to 10 pools in profit because you're gonna have 30 pools less chemical and 30 pools less wear and tear on things that get divided out. It's true. So it, it's not a one-to-one -one scale. No. You will still make decent profit. You'll probably drop from whatever $40,000 profit to $20,000 profit. And that's above your living expenses, which you've already which you're already paying for out of the thing. So that you're clearing an extra twenty grand and freeing up time. And hey, you can take a vacation on occasion in your off seasons. That's and that gets to the other con uh, uh, for this uh, conundrum that I'm in is that like the main reason, the main reason that I want to get out of the business. Outside of money, outside of all that, the main reason I want to get out of the business is because I feel like running a business, being a business owner, is it is changing the way my brain works. And I do not like it. It is not good for me, long-term, healthy. I don't feel like I'm living a healthy life mentally, which I know is very much kind of like, suck it up, pussy, but like, even now, when I have free time, like yesterday, had free time, I was like, okay, I, we finished streaming. I finished streaming yesterday morning. I was like, as far as business goes, next week I'm doing billing all week long, so that'll be yeah. next week. It's not this weekend. But I was like, all right, we got free time. We can just relax. We can just. But all I did the entire time outside of streaming was sit here and worry and stress about fucking clients calling me and calling me with problems and something breaking. And I was just like, and that's how my free time is now. It's like whenever I do have free time, I just sit here, I'm a ball of fucking nerves and anxiety and I don't get to enjoy my free time. Even when I take the one week off for Christmas, like the first three days are nice, but after that, I just start, I'm just like, well, what's happening on this pool? Is something gonna happen on this pool? Is something gonna have blah, blah, blah? Is somebody gonna fucking call me and I'm gonna have to go out there? And so it's like, you can never turn it off. And I'm just like, yeah. I think long term, that's not healthy for a human being. I don't think you're supposed to be that tied to a fucking occupation. And I'm going to throw this in terms of Joey from what he's throwing in check, because he's absolutely correct. You're atlasing the business. Yeah, I am. And the reason that all of this is happening is because you have no structure in place to take the weight off of you. Yep. So, so option four is reducing the workload, finding balance, and then going through and finding a way to take the weight off of you. Like, is there someone that you can pay 500 bucks a month or whatever to do billing for you? No. So that way you don't <laughs> have to do that. That's, that's the other issue is that, like, at least with the setup that it is now, again, not a normal business. I send invoices to clients and I give them notes and I let them know what's going on. They need to replace this. This is happening. This is what you're up against. Nobody reads the fucking invoices. Nobody. So well, it's just stop like doing them. Yeah, no, I thought about it because <laughs> I'm just like, I spend so much time just, making these 105 right. messenger pigeons, you know, 105 invoices that I hand type. I, I mean, at this point, I just, just changed the date and changed the, right. the time, but so, it's not that big of a deal. So just automate that shit. Don't do personalized billing. Just give them a stock thing. You got this on this date. You're being charged this much. Give me my money. <laughs> And that just automate that shit 
And then the ones that call you and complain, if you want to keep them instead of just firing them immediately, which you probably would do, because you've got dad in you. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but the ones that complain, oh, you didn't write that I had a special note on my bill. Okay, fine. If you wanted to, you could just send that person a personalized note, and now you're doing one instead of a hundred. Beef, I've been telling them that. <laughs> they told me <laughs> the post-it notes. Yeah. yeah, I run, I run my business uh, uh, expressly through post-it notes. Joey, uh, I, I appreciate that you have been telling him all of this. I've been telling him all this too. Nah, you're. Nah, nah, I, nah, 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 I you're have been telling him this about. shit for for eighteen months now. <laughs> This is been, this is basically this entire conversation we've been having is every phone conversation every other week where he starts griping about his business and goes into how much he wants to quit and I'm trying to talk him out of blowing it all up. That's the the okay so that's that option and we have basically uh, one other option. I think there's another one but I forget and I don't want to kill well, too much of this time. Like wh whichever one you're thinking of, you're obviously forgetting about the one that you really want to do. Where you just stop doing everything and you start smelting gold on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, oh well, yeah, I'm definitely. That's ready for the that one, one he wants to do. <laughs> I do, yeah, I do. I'd be a hundred percent gold refiner. Like, just go to thrift just, shops and buy shitty ass AK fucking yeah, gold. <laughs> that's what he wants to do. It, it, I mean, and I can't fault it because I want to go around and play slot machines on YouTube for a living, and yeah. I just can't. Yeah, like the other option would be similar to the Snacksville option with an apartment. Except I would uh, live in Amsterdam. I would get an apartment in Amsterdam. Same scenario. I mean, different scenario, obviously. But I would have the same expenses renting. R renting an apartment in Amsterdam still cheaper than renting an apartment in Florida, which is weird. Strange. But again, you don't speak all the languages that you would necessarily need. Now, a lot uh, of people you... in Amsterdam, everybody spoke English when I went over there. Everybody did. Yeah. Everybody yeah. did. And all the signs, everything's in English. So it's not hard. How long would it take you to blow all your money on Kush and prostitutes? Oh, probably not. Probably not. <laughs> I, I think it would take a little while because, you know, like, <laughs> it's affordable. The. Uh, I like how his answer isn't, um, I'm not going to do that. No, no, it would take a little while. Yeah, it would take, oh, I guarantee you, I'd be buying weed by the handful and buying pussy by the handful. Just uh, grab by the and pussy, that's what Trump told us to do. I, I've never been, but I imagine Amsterdam is just like Whole Foods, where you just reach your hand into a barrel and pull out the weed and just <laughs> get of. all that you want. <laughs> kind of. It is. <laughs> like... Have you paid for the process? Oh, yeah, of course, brother. You guys think I'm making jokes about putting money in the boot? No, it's the most efficient no. way. Like, it's yep. literally, yep. it's like, and then on top of that, when you're, when you pay for an hour and then you, you, you blow through in five and a half minutes, then you have someone to play Magic the Gathering with for 55 minutes. Oh, yeah. It's nice. Absolutely. Like, it's fucking great. Like, so it's almost like that joke in Deadpool where he brings Vanessa to go play ski ball. <laughs> And it's like, oh, well, what do you want to do with the other three minutes? <laughs> oh, that's bang. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I, I, the sixth thrust, that's all we need. All right, we're not here to waste anybody's time, okay? It was like, Jesus. Well, I mean, it, yeah, come on, stay with the brand. Six and two-thirds at least. <laughs> so that's the other option. Go live in Amsterdam for two years. Basically do the same thing that I would do in Snacksville. Six and two thrusts. Very good, Joey. Yes, that, that works. <laughs> Oh, Joey beat you to it, Drew. Be good that you tried. I'm gonna give, I'll give Joey that pin. Oh God. So that's essentially what I'm up against. I'm not making any decisions right now because I know I have learned through many, many mistakes <laughs> that you do not okay. make any big decisions when you're hungry, when you're angry, when you're tired, when you're depressed. You just don't. You just be still. And when you're right, poor. Yeah, when you're poor. Right now, I'm at, I know that I'm at my breaking point. And I'm just like, okay. In normal situations, I'd be like, fuck it. We're done with it. <laughs> it's just like... A, a, <laughs> you go full Gene Oakland. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would. <laughs> fuck it. Fuck it. <laughs> like, and I've done that in the past, multiple times in my life. When I just get tired and beat down by yeah. something. And I'm just like, I don't want to do this anymore. And I literally drop it like a bad idea and i'm done and i just find a new right. normal i struggle for a little while find a new normal and then i'm there for about two and a half years and then i'm just like fuck it we're done with this and we drop well, it and we find a new normal for about two and a half years and we just continue the nomad life but now as i'm approaching 40 i'm just like 
I should probably not do that. Well, I should probably you slow. have a unique opportunity here where you're at that you can't recreate. Yeah, that's true. And that that's the hard thing is you will not find anything that gives you the money that you're making now in the situation that you're in. Where, yes, you don't have family around, but you also have a lot of friends around yeah. that you... Uh, Whereas that I don't see because I don't have time <laughs> because you we've given you ideas on how to free up some more time and sort of, you know, so that could fix things. Nah. However, do you want to have all the time in the world being in Snacksville and the only people around you are mouth alpha, heart attack, stepdad and dementia meme? Well, I mean, I would branch out and find my own social circle. I do love Snacksville. Like, I loved living there. I was just, at that time, I was, I was domesticated know. and I was fucking, you know, taking care of a woman with Alzheimer's and dementia. So I had no time and no free spirit. So I was just like. Pfft. Yeah, Joe, Joey points out that, uh, that that group of people is a pretty good D&D crew. It's true. Dementia meme. It's true. I mean, definitely a, a level four barbarian. <laughs> Find a way to increase efficiency in your business. Cut some clients to give you a little more free time. Please have sex, brother. Yes, that would probably solve a lot. Brother. You need to get onto Hinge again here, buddy. I'm on Hinge. I, I, I match with ladies all the time, but I'm just like, I especially now, this is what I'm talking about when the business has warped my mind. I have business brain now, and I'm just like, can we speed this up? Can we get to the good stuff? I was just like, I'm not here to small talk, all right? And I've told some ladies, I was just like, look, I'm just here to I'm bang. Just here to say, yeah, yeah, are you are you willing? Are you available? And of course they unmatch, but I'm just like, fuck it. <laughs> it's like we're yeah. throwing it out there. You're too far into the bit because I've seen some of the replies that you're making to these women, <laughs> and I think some of them you just do for laughs and do to just try to make fun. What? And you're, ooh, I don't know, but if I can't see foresee a future in it, oh yeah, I'll dive bomb it for content for sure, without a doubt. It's right. Just like, uh, <laughs> and just, the funny thing is, you're making content for things nobody else will ever fucking see. Nobody. It's just it's it's content for me. Like that's you're it. you're doing the Jim Halpert on the Office to nobody <laughs> out the windshield of your car making content that doesn't exist for anyone but you <laughs> yeah it, no it's content for him yeah it, it is it, it's, it's exactly Ugh. what it is like i i don't you know i'm too also... far into the bit you've got twitch brain where everything needs to be entertaining and everything needs to be a bit and i understand nobody does always be skitting like i do i get it i know what but i also you know, have a wife and a family and responsibilities and you know money that I can't just give up on exactly that I don't want to and that's the that's the good thing about my situation I have no kids I have yep. no pets and I have no bitches so I literally and I have no debt other than student loans which I'm just like uh, take your fucking peasant money I ain't fucking giving you anything more I was just right. like come after me bro what do I give a shit like it's like uh so I I do have the advantage here in the situation that like look my 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 life is like and that's what i think about all the time when i get all bent out of shape about business and i'm just like oh i fucking hate the business I need to shutter this fucking shit and go live and be a hermit in fucking snacksville but then i think about look you know like i i am i have an infinite amount of gratitude for my situation i have a cush situation outside of the right. business fucking wearing me down and making me gonna stroke out before i'm 44. like there are people out there that are living paycheck to paycheck working at walmart and going nowhere and they will get nowhere you know like that's right that's not my life i have options so like i i have I have things I can do. I have avenues like and so that that what that is kind of what makes me scared is that like I'm I'm finally to a point in my life where I don't have to necessarily worry about where my next paycheck's going to come from. Just so long as I keep showing up, keep doing what I've already been doing for the last eight years, like I'll be fine in that regard money wise. But all the other aspects, you know, right. not so much. So um, you put up the the gripe hills zone logo yes. that i did for you last week correct and this captures the essence of the show more than anything else right now it is me in a giant clown car trying to chase after six as he is actively running away from me trying to do whatever help i'm doing by the way hiding a drink and trying to drink it as fast as he can while running away with me like a dog that's been caught eating something it's not supposed to <laughs> and you yell at him what are you what do you got and they just run away from you eating more no stop eating the styrofoam <laughs> right so i mean this is literally all we are all the robefnik 
flying robot car right now, trying to catch up to Six, who's just trying, I just want to drink myself to death, leave yeah, me alone, running away from us. For real. It's like, I don't even drink alcohol. That's the funny part. <laughs> like, All right, guys, enough filibustering. I've taken up too much of your time. Enough and- filibustering. 85 minutes into the show. <laughs> Taking up enough of your time listening to me live journal, you know, my life. So <laughs> what we're going to do here, guys, we're going to we're going to pivot. We're going to do a pivot. I'm going to take a tinkle and beef right. is going to regale you with some sort of story of some sort. Uh, while well, I tinkle. Why don't know. Uh, why don't we do a break in between? Uh, you go uh, take a tinkle, throw up some gold smelting video on. I'll go get another cup of coffee. And uh, why don't we um, come back with the Diablo trailer and okay. then we'll end up with wrestling. All right. Very cool. And Pentiment. I was going to say, how much time do you have, Beef? Do you have a... Uh, uh... So far, nobody's come downstairs. All right, cool. So, I mean, Giovanni, uh, uh, old uh, Gustavo Octavius Beef, uh, came back in from going on a bike ride because he's into this health kick because he doesn't want to be his fat parents. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's like, I don't understand it, but you do you, buddy. I hope you. I hope it works for you. <laughs> it's like, I want to go outside and do push-ups in 100-degree heat. Oh, you enjoy that. He's crazy. I, oh. He's crazy. Dude, I... I about sold my car the other day just because I went back out to my vehicle and the car was 103 degrees when I got into it with my sun visor up. Right. So if without the sun visor, it would have been 115. And it's like, this is just unreasonable. It must be the car's fault. <laughs> oh. All right, guys. I'm going to take a, a small piss break, uh, a piss mezzo and uh, I'm going to leave you with this. And we'll come back and we'll talk about Diablo and then we're going to talk about wrestling. We've got a wrestling segment that we're going to get through and then we'll play yeah. Pentiment and we'll close it out. All right, guys, uh, here we go. Uh, we're, we're switching over, right? Nope. Wait, is this, is this going to be gold smelting? Is it ice machine repair or is it air conditioning repair? It is uh, living in a tiny home. <laughs> <laughs> I had you to build a tiny house. Well, I've always had the dream of living on the land. This is how much he's been thinking about it, guys. Grow my own vegetables and be as sustainable as possible. Um, And I was offered the opportunity to put a tiny home on this land here. Plus, it's affordable. Auckland prices are just insane. They're out of control. They are very much out of control. So, yeah, it's affordable. Absolutely. And you have done such a great job with this home as well. Thank you. And can you tell me about the design of the home? Yeah, I wanted a lot of indoor-outdoor flow, bringing the outside in. So these doors here are trifolds. They fold right back. Same with the kitchen. I've got a trifold window. So you can stand in the kitchen with the windows open and look out at this beautiful view. And the materials that you've used in the construction are really nice as well. I especially love the core team. Yeah, the core team with the black. So originally I was looking at cedar, but cedar's heavier, and I think it was a little more expensive too. So I went with the core team, and it's just turned out amazing. Yeah, it really pops. Eh? Yeah. And the parking spot you've found for your home is just fantastic. It is beautiful, yeah. Very grateful to have this spot. This land is owned by a friend of mine, and we've got horses together. And she would joke about when they buy their land, well, you know, come and put a tiny home on the back of the property. And, and here I am. And what a spot it is. And yeah. it's so cool that you get to be close to your horses I as do. well. I do, yes, yes. I have the love of my life in my backyard. Five-year-old Emily is living her dream right now. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. And it's so cool that you were able to do this with your friend as well, because your friend has quite a bit of land here, and it's really nice that you can sort of share in that and help her to take care of the place as well. Yeah, absolutely. There's 10 acres here. We've got eight horses on the property, so definitely we've just been able to maintain the property together. You know, we share vegetable gardens. When they go away, they've got someone on the land to look after. What is this? Who vetted this video? Fantastic. And the outdoor area. Uh, that enough of the. Uh, uh, I want to see well. the actual like house, guys. Me. Yeah. Yeah. The not especially. This is like when you try to look yes, up a recipe online, yes, and it starts out with my memory of lasagna starts with when my here. dad used to grow yeah, his own tomatoes. Clearly, you're somebody that loves to cook. I'm actually not at the pantry. I mean, here. I, think it's I do <laughs> still <laughs> like the appeal the of a tiny house. Like I think it's cool. Folds down. And when my parents yeah. do come say, I, it would, I, I, it would be cool. Absolutely. Like, I like you the and I, shower unit. we that's a bit kind of have similar bedroom, living though. conditions if we were able to just live on our own. Inside. We would but go we'll through say, and probably you know, have something like a tiny house or a little apartment and be just fine being minimalist. Mm-hmm. However, the problem is where to put that tiny house. And if the answer is on mom's land, when, you know, heart attack stepdad might die, who knows? <laughs> I'm not laughing at uh, heart attack step that. I'm laughing at yeah, well, whatever you <laughs> sick ass. I mean, good lord, what's wrong with you? All right, you ready, guys? We're segueing into a different thing. We're actually 
We we have topics we need to discuss. We gotta rip through this because I don't know how long the wrestling segment's gonna take. Yeah, I mean, we'll be fine. I don't want to rush anything, but we're we're here well, to I, we're here for the. I do need good you stuff. to share the uh, to share your Firefox with me again. Oh, okay, yeah. Hold on. Yeah. All right, give me one second, guys. Because I gotta get all the YouTube assets I found for you. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay. Uh, hold on one second. Bring that up. Bring this up. Come over here. There it is. Okay. All right. You see Nia Jax? Uh, hold on. Uh, yes. Okay. We're going Diablo first, I think. Yeah. I'll switch over in All just right. a second. Yeah. All right. Do that. Beast webcam still up. Beef move. Uh, did you freeze? Yeah, you froze. Oh, joy. Okay. Come back over here. All right. You're moving. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> yeah, no, they, I don't know where this conversation went to. As soon as it like stopped being about your life, it started being about how gay they were. <laughs> I love it. I I love the early morning drunk Pfizer. So <laughs> right. Oh yeah. I don't. I don't when, often get to see it. So. You know, the, the fun part of early morning drunk Vicer is it's still troll Vicer just with no filter, mm -hmm. which he normally doesn't have one anyway. But. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> All right, we're going to get into it. Beef, you wanted to you want to preface Diablo here? Yeah, uh, we're going to show the just because it, it, it was it was fucking cool and I enjoyed it and I still like Diablo four. The changes that they made the last season finally made it more like Diablo three, which is better. So now they're, uh, they put out the new cinema for the expansion of Diablo 4. I thought it was rad as hell. And I think that there'll be some things that Six appreciates in here. This would go fully well with his, uh, his horror metal rock black background that uh, Tonio did for him. Yeah. All right, so play so, it. Uh, yeah, go ahead and play it. All right. I'm blind right now. I can't see anything, so you'll have to let me know if it's coming through. Oh, what the... Cheers, cheers. What's the problem? What do you No, you can see the video, right? Or you just don't see me? Or what oh, yeah, see? I can see the video. I just have a full screen on my side. Oh, okay. Then, yeah, just watch the video. Yeah. Uh, good graphics. Boy, young one. Are you all right? <laughs> yeah, she's obviously fine. Yeah, she's fine. Walk it off. Smoke some menthol. Nerel? Oh, you're not well. Please, 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 my child, let me help you. Stay away from me! Oh. Nerel! Is that how I raised you? You remember her mom, right? No, mother. No. But... But I must carry this she died in the alone. Last okay. I must get to Akarat's tomb. But look at you. You're killing yourself. Bro, big uncanny valley I, energy here. Right? I don't know how much longer I can... Shh. I'm here, little magpie. It's crazy CG. <laughs> Something Blizzard has always been amazing with. So yeah, they they know how to do a sizzle so trailer, that's proud for sure. Of you. But now, I need you to give up. Oh. No, no, no. Of course it's you. <laughs> you monster. Oh, all right. Get to the hentai portion. Here come the tentacles. No. You made a choice. Is this Lilith? This is Mephisto. Mephisto. Oh, okay. Remember, Lilith is dead after the last game. Oh, all right. Consequences. Oh, Jesus Christ. Wow. I like it. That's the great fucking line. Yeah, that's the Vista. Damn, he's big. That's Mephisto in the Soul Stone. Nice. Yes, Vicer, this is Diablo 4. 
Maybe Vicer's favorite game. Favorite game. What Joey's favorite game too. I could use some help. Oh, oh shit! Whoops! <laughs> Whoops! A doodle. I mean, I would still ride in that boat. Run me through Venice with a with a body with a giant root hanging out of him. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, the vessel of hatred. So the new expansion. Yeah, new expansion, October eighth. Minimum price forty dollars. You can pay up to a hundred dollars if you want. Forty dollars. Forty dollars for an expansion pack. God, I mean, Elden Ring, the new one is forty dollars, but they're gonna give you a lot of fucking shit. Well, they are giving you a lot of stuff. Like you get a free battle pass. <laughs> <laughs> I have uh, completely clocked out of fucking Diablo Four. I, uh, I know. I it's strange because like I love Diablo. I always have loved Diablo, but like. Man, something about maybe it's just where I'm at in life right now, but I'm also I'm just like it just ain't hitting, man. It ain't hitting. I'm still enjoying it. I still play it. Uh, I played up with the new exp with the the new season, which reverted a lot of things because they brought in the Diablo three team to finally take over on Diablo four's end game and and uh, all of their content and community. It has improved a whole lot. Which is funny because now it's improved by going back to a game that's 16 years old. <laughs> but it, it, I am looking forward to seeing them. I enjoyed the story. Something Blizzard can always do, even if they fuck the goat on everything else, they can always make great cutscenes. It. I mean, Joey's right. Diablo 4 is a spreadsheet. And I know technically Diablo has always kind of been a spreadsheet, but it for whatever reason... When I was playing Diablo 4, it felt like playing a spreadsheet. Like, and that's well, never been a problem for me before playing any Diablo. It never actually felt like I was playing Excel. Well, I mean, different strokes for different folks. It does yeah. happen. Diablo 3 is when it really started becoming number porn. Like, uh, the entire point of Diablo 3 was, oh, well, have you gotten to the trillions of damage yet? Uh, you need to keep going until you can find a number of damage that you can do that gives an account and a hard on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, that that's literally what Diablo 3 was for a long time. And then it just became finding new ways to make the numbers go bigger. Yeah, yeah. So now that that's where they're at in Diablo 4, is trying to find ways to make the number get bigger. And they're finally coming around to the idea that, hey, people just want to cyborg the fuck out of your game and beat the holy shit out of it. They don't want challenge. It's true. True. It's weird. Uh, Frankie put it in chat. June 5th, 2023 was when D4 came out. It feels like it came out longer. Uh, well, that was the early release. The official release date was June 6th, 2023. So that way it could have, it was 666 after you multiply the two and the three together. Actually. <laughs> I will fucking actually nerd you all day long on this shit. <laughs> I still play Diablo. So this was season four? <laughs> that was season four trailer? No, this um, we're already in season four. That's the expansion pack. The expansion pack is separate than the season. Holy, are you joking me? Get the fuck out nope. of here. I ain't paying that. <laughs> and it's going to be the uh, the seasons are free, but it's going to be the first new um, new character that they've introduced in Diablo in friggin' years. Uh, that... the, the spirit born character, which actually just seems like Jungle Druid. Jungle but I mean, Druid. you know. That that is what like kind of I don't know I I've never been there's never been a video game that I played where I got secondhand burned out but after yeah. hearing that Joey maxed out his characters in fucking two days on hardcore and D four I somehow that gave me secondhand burnout and I was like I'm not interested anymore. Well, I mean that's that's Joey going no lifing it and and doing the that's that's how you make burnout is no lifing shit i play three or four hours you know every few days and at a slow leisurely pace and i'm enjoying it i'm i'm having a good time hey what's uh what's going on no uh, uh glad you could make it if you are father happy day to all that's right i am not a father yeah. and i will never just be to, just to reiterate out there happy father's day to all you motherfuckers out there yeah exactly for real I, like, appreciate so. you dropping in uh, k and o 
I know no because uh, he comes from uh, my wrestling Candy Crush game that I quit playing when I decided I wanted to save money. Oh, he's one of your people? Yeah, he's one of my people. Oh, disgusting. Ban him. Chat, ban him from chat. <laughs> he's one He's one of those beefers. Oh, uh, you need the beefers. Everybody becomes a beefer. He's like one, of those, uh, one of those... You, you let one of those tenderloins in here? Yes. Disgusting. I got one of my tenderloins. Thank you for pinning him, Vicer. I appreciate you, buddy. Thank you. Mm. Very appropriate for a <laughs> for wrestling Candy Crush. Mm. <laughs> Speaking of wrestling, let's segue oh, into it. A natural segue. Let's do it. Uh, we gonna let let's start up uh, inside the lines for this week or whatever right. the fuck we're doing. Whatever All right. This bit is I don't even know anymore. All right, hold on. Let me. We gotta get rid of bickering brothers. The Boomer Brothers bickering. <laughs> that was that was Joey's contribution, and then we'll bring out uh, inside the lines. <laughs> right inside the lines, where we wear uh, we we check the nostalgia for things that are old or whatever Six's bit is that I don't pay attention to. Six's daddy? No, I am not, sir. I I had the baby factory sh closed permanently because I was like I I love kids. I get along with them. I'm just a giant child, so like I love kids. Yeah. Get along. Do not want one for myself. They cost too much fucking money. I, I think Drooby is saying it more in the lines of uh, "Daddy." Yeah, no, I figured. You know, that's, I figured. Yeah, uh -huh. I was just, I was just segueing. I mean, especially with Vicer pointing it out now. I mean, well, I do. Right, I, so, I, I, I have had ladies tell me before. I do have big daddy energy, so it was just like, well, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, it comes with having money. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> I mean, that's literally what comes <laughs> up with that. Oh, you've got 60000 hidden in your apartment somewhere? Yeah. Daddy. Yeah, for real. Uh, uh, nice hanging out with us, Joey. Uh, t t uh, we appreciate your advice and support. Can't believe that you've been up for 30 hours straight. What the fuck is wrong with you? Stop treating yeah. your body like a piece Ooh. of shit. Respect the temple. You only get one of them. My good Lord, man. Like, I appreciate the grind there, buddy, but seriously, I, why are you staying up 30 hours to play Mega Man? I don't get it. Don't, <laughs> you, don't do that to yourself, buddy. It, wasn't there some ease you could play? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, Joey, get some sleep. Jesus. <laughs> Thank you for, jo for joining us, buddy. We appreciate it. It was great contributions today. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. All right. On to the... the is he gone? Is he gone? Good. He's the worst member of chat. Can't believe he showed up. Oh, my God. Jesus. Worst member of every show and channel he's a part of. Lord. That was oh, like, my God. Oh, wait, he's still here. Shit. No, 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 no. Can't uh, cancel all the Italy jokes that we were going to make. Uh, yeah, we, were, we were talking about Rio. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about Rio. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? I what what was the... Uh, we were going somewhere all before right. we started We're, we're getting trashing. into the wrestling. Are you guys ready for wrestling? It's wrestling time. Okay. How did we get into trashing chat for no reason? What happened there? They deserve it. <laughs> we got to keep them in line. Like, <laughs> like... Um, so uh, Six uh, likes the idea of doing our, our little talk format, which we agree. Uh, it, it's coming off well. We, we have fun with it. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. wrestling time because that's yeah. something that we both grew up with. We can bl both bloviate about whenever we feel like. I can't believe um, Drewby doesn't like wrestling. That is a surprise to me. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I feel like wrestling is prime made for Drewby and he doesn't like it. Wait, uh, I haven't seen York in a while. I think he quit uh, listening. No, when... York's there. <laughs> I guarantee you, uh, York, York, York is salivating and frothing <laughs> at wrestling. He's been waiting this whole time. See, he's here. Ah, oh, is he there? <laughs> he's <laughs> always he's here. I love him. Oh, he's, he's misspelling here, though, so he's drunk, too. He's been up drinking with Vicer all night. He, he probably was. <laughs> they, they love the VR chat. <laughs> So um, my, my first thought was trying to come up with, because how do you follow up Yinling the Erotic Terrorist and Hustle Pro Wrestling last week where you birth a sumo wrestler out of an egg? I mean, and you get somebody pregnant by spitting on the VJJ. I don't, uh, how do you follow that up? And um, I had no answer. We don't. So <laughs> you don't. You, you, you just move on. Yep. You power through. So I started thinking about, oh, well, what's been going on in wrestling that, you know, and I remember seeing a clip of a dude named uh, Ray Phoenix, who's a Mexican luchador, who went through and dropped somebody on their head on Rampage. And it was literally a Jaguar driver from Tekken. So I guess cue it up and show people an example of what we were talking about there, Sixty. That's the Jaguar driver. 
that's King's Jaguar driver, which is yeah. unsafe, very unsafe. <laughs> yeah, very. That is that is like patently unsafe, and no logic to it either, because it, it's King dropping somebody on their head to literally turn it into a power bomb, and then a backdrop driver, and then a giant swing. <laughs> so I mean, it is no sense whatsoever. Just drop them on their head and shoulders, immediately break neck. Mm-hmm. And then Ray Phoenix saw Tekken 8 at some point and be like, oh, you know what would work in wrestling wrestling? I could do the same thing and maybe make it a, a, a scotch safer. Mm -hmm. mm. So mm -hmm. Dragon Poor Dante Martin up, drops him, and then bleh. <laughs> I mean, that is not nice. No. Why are you doing that? Mm -hmm. Zero care for your opponent. Mm. He was a little safe. He he helped him on the way down. <laughs> he was a little safe. He did. Is he, what you're going with there. He hooked the arm on the way down so he'd <laughs> land on like the upper shoulder back area. So he's okay. Margin of error on this move, literally zero. Yeah. It's, I, <laughs> I wouldn't take that move. No way. No. And what's more is he's taking this move, if you see the, the back, the Chiron on the back, he's taking this move on Rampage. Yeah. Mm. In a throwaway... Mm. match with no blood feud whatsoever. I don't know why he's pissed at Dante Martin, but he's definitely pissed enough to just drop him on his head like he owes him trans. Mm. Mm. On their C-level show. Mm -hmm. Gonna go through and try to give a give a some bitch brain damage. No. Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. I don't, so, that got me thinking about super effective looking finishing moves. <laughs> and it's like, oh, well, what other finishing moves out there that look super effective? And in my researching of finishing moves, I, I started to notice a trend. Mm -hmm. And it went from, oh, these are super effective finishing moves that look like they kill somebody, to, oh, these are fat guys squashing people that looks like it kills somebody. <laughs> and it just turned into, oh, well, w what other fat guy things <laughs> looks like it murders the opponent? <laughs> and that's how we get to 12,000 pounds of meat on Father's Day. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, uh, naturally, as one does. Um, what was, let's give people an example. What, what was the first, uh, gift that I threw into Giphy so that I could send to you? Big Daddy V. Uh, Big Daddy V, uh, when he was going as Big Daddy Voodoo, uh, wrestling in all Japan in one of the times that he was released from the WWE. Um, 650 pound man just squishes somebody off the top rope. He's so huge, man. So big. God damn. Oh my God. Yes, Erica, you completely mixed out on fixing Six's life. Uh, we decided he's going to go to Amsterdam and just take handfuls of weed out of barrels of whole food pot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty uh, much. So anybody who sees Big Daddy Viscera come off the top rope with the flight trajectory of a couch, <laughs> just squishing whoever this poor bitch is, Th that is a fully believable finishing move. For real. Yeah, if I if, if a 650-pound mountain of a man landed on me, <laughs> I ain't kicking out. Rest in peace, Viscera. We miss you. We miss you being able to squash fools, although WWF never let him once come off the top rope like that on no, somebody. And no. we understand why. Yeah, Viscera, I mean, he caught a lot of heat. Uh, especially during the time when he sat on Kevin Nash's back after Kevin oh Nash told him, do not fuck with my back. My back yeah, is don't in... do this. You've been hurting people. I'm the champion. And guess who goes and does it? Yeah, Viscera. He oh, went and literally just, and it wasn't, let's see if I can find it real quick. I'll see if I can find it real quick. Like, it wasn't even a safe sitting down. No. Like, it was, uh, let's see, King Mabel. He was King Mabel at the time. King Mabel. Yeah, King Mabel. It was SummerSlam. Diesel. Uh, SummerSlam 95? Yeah. Hold on, let me see if I can find it real quick. We can... You know, just in case I, I, you know, I prove my wrestling savant bullshit. Oh, God. Yeah, there you go. Look at that. God, it looks even worse. Oh, I have it up, don't I? <laughs> Forgot that. Okay, or no, Beef can see it. That's fine. All right. Yeah. Uh, hold on, guys. I'll bring it up real quick. I'll show you what we're talking about in, spe uh, in specific. Yeah, Ma you're oh, right, no, York. No, Mabel has no wrong. business coming off the top rope. The ring has no business holding Mabel on the top rope. Oh, that God, should no, not man. be physically possible. Hell no, man. No, oh, no. no. Uh, we're about to lose Beefy's mic again. I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> I saved it, but I don't know where the fuck I saved it. 
So, all right, hold on. We'll do that. Okay. Why did I just notice the music coming back? Did, was it gone for a long time? I turned it off for a little while. We were talking oh, okay. about other stuff, and then I brought it back in. We gotcha. brought it back in. Okay, I found it. Here we go. All right, so we were talking about Viscera being unsafe and sitting on Kevin oh, Nash. Oh, yeah. This is what we're talking about. It's a 600-pound man. This is just, not how you oh. fake a move. <laughs> like, no. Uh, no, there, there's nothing fake about that. It's just I'm going to land my entire ass on the back of the small of your back oh, and hope your spine holds up. God, bro, I'd be so fucking livid. Like, especially he if was I pissed. Yeah, especially if I specifically told him before the match, don't fuck with my back. Well, and what's more is Nash isn't even looking at him. He does not know this is coming. <laughs> he told Mabel not to do it. And it's specifically because Viscera has already been hurting people. Uh, he's been, he has been hurting jobbers and other people at house shows doing this shit just be, to get himself over. Which, by the way, that's going to be a running theme today. Yeah. That guy's sitting on jobbers. Yeah, definitely. All right, let's get um, rid of Big This. Move on to the next yeah, one. Yeah, so I, I looked at uh, Big Daddy Voodoo in, a, in All Japan doing his big top rope splash. And that got me connected to other big splashes of wrestlers coming in. If he um, injures people, less competition. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. Vicer, you got you got a career in professional wrestling. Yeah, you, we you got Vicer, the Hulk Hogan of uh, Twitch shows over here. You want uh, Aki Bono? Yeah, I think the next one on the list was the Ricky Bono splash. Our buddy Aki Bono, uh, before he became a baby, <laughs> was... <laughs> This is him and Noah with Takeshi Rikio, another sumo wrestler, deciding to just flatten whoever this person is that they made into a pancake. Oh, you got at least 800 pounds coming towards you. Well, Aki Bono is 550 pounds. Jesus Christ. And also uh, rocking the, the one strapper that he probably wore out to the club that week, too. Yeah, I don't know. that's right. The, uh, well, the, the finest of egg nightclub wear. <laughs> The funny thing about this is Aki Bono is so big. He's 6'7", 550 pounds. Takeshi Rikio behind him is 300 pounds himself and also a champion sumo wrestler. That's how small he makes Rikio look. And they just decide, no, we're going to end this man's life. Yeah. <laughs> Double splash him. <laughs> that is one of my favorite tag team moves. And anybody who tells me that that is not a believable finish in a real fight. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just fall on the opponent. That's all you need to do. Nah, we, uh, we're making Salisbury steak tonight, guys. we got to tenderize and flatten it first. The Salisbury, and they'll gravy it with whatever squeezed out his ass when they landed on mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm. you know that he needed a Dusty Rhodes muffler. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, so just, just don't, don't fight, 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 fat, fat folk. folk. Yeah, true. You're right, Viser. That's a good call, especially when y'all are skinny. Yeah. We're going to Vader Salt? Um, Big Van Vader, the legend of fat guy fighters, uh, legit football player, legit tough guy. This big 400-pound bastard can do a moonsault and destroy the macho man with it. Oh, God. That should not be legal. That yeah. should not be physically possible. And that's just stupid. Why? How? How? <laughs> Bro, I mean, if anything, it's kind of divine retribution because, like, look, I love Macho Man. I, I oh, to yeah. be honest with you, I love Macho Man more than I love Hulk Hogan. But, like, Me too. Me Macho too. Man had the proclivity, the tendency to do his finishing move, which was a top rope elbow drop. He literally yeah. just got to the top rope, put his elbow out, and then rammed his elbow directly into the chest of the opponent. However, when Macho Man would do it, he never pulled punches with it. He literally jammed his fucking elbow into your sternum, broke right, ribs, so, everything else. So, about that, it's not even the elbow that was the most dangerous part of it. Macho Man would go full sideways and land with his entire broadside directly on top of your ribs while he's dropping that elbow as close to your throat and the top of the chest as he could get. Oh, man. Was... I loved Macho Man, but I guarantee you he broke a couple ribs doing that elbow drop. On he somebody. did. He did. Like, he, there was a couple of jobbers where he fucking broke their sternums because he fucking I... landed with all of his weight. 
I don't know what it is that get these wrestlers so angry at jobbers that it's like, I want to murder them for coming into the building to make me look good. Yeah. Oh, yeah, bro. These bastards deserve every bit of it. Oh, I'm trying to find a, a gif real quick of... Oh, there we yeah. go. That'll do it. That'll do it. That's a jobber, yeah. too. So. <laughs> the top rope elbow smash. Yeah. Macho Man. And it, look, it looked real and convincing because it was. <laughs> so, right. you know, I, I give props in, in that regard. Like, if you're a wrestler especially old timey wrestlers like territory wrestlers they had to make it look real like that you're you're selling the sizzle oh. you're selling the craft so all right here we exactly. go Here's... we're gonna expand that up just for classic sake oh i love the top rope elbow smash i mean he was so good literally i mean in this one he's at least taking care of the opponent a little bit because he's doing it in the the fucking stomach and not the chest right but still the, uh, macho man he's 250 pounds of pure muscle landing on your ass it's not gonna feel good how did macho not break his own ribs every know. night i don't know man I just, I'm just assuming that he was so manly that the rib that was taken out for Eve was put back, and he just had an extra one to give him more stability and support. That's a good question, Vicer. If, and I'm sure Beef will handle it. Uh, like, if you hurt the fuck out of your opponent and they can't fight back or perform properly, how is that even handled? Like, there's some scripting involved, right? So if someone goes AWOL, someone goes into the business for themselves, what the fuck is the opponent supposed to do? Just get hurt for the sake of the craft? Beef, you want to handle that? All right, so uh, a, a big part of wrestling is being able to trust your opponent. Um, if somebody breaks that trust, it can lead to a shoot fight, if you can handle yourself, where people have... Arn Anderson tells a story about, I believe it was um, Buzz Sawyer, was uh, being a crotchety old man and stiffing him and hitting him and hurting him. And Arn Anderson gave him a receipt. Yeah, you he receipt your back. opponent. Yeah, you pay yeah. them back. You if they stiff you, meaning they deliver a real blow, you stiff them back. So Arn uh, had him down in the corner, sitting against the bottom turnbuckle, and full force kicked him in the fucking mouth. Yeah, and knocked two his two front teeth down his throat. <laughs> and uh, Buzz never messed with him again. Never fought him. In, never fought him backstage. Never did anything else. Yeah, but I, Arn established that you ain't gonna fuck with me. No, uh, uh no. I, I, and I kind of love that in a way because in no other business in America is that the answer. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, someone exactly. pisses you off and stiffs you. You fucking hit him back live. For, <laughs> recorded. Janine, damn it, Janine in accounting forgot to put on my overtime pay. Hit her with a chair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love it. Yeah, exactly, uh, Vicer. You do have you do have the the general essence. Kind of like when you go too hard in boxing sparring, your opponent will stop holding back. You got it, brother. Right. You got yeah. it. Because I mean, some wrestlers they'll just take it and they'll bitch out the opponent when they get back into the back ring. Some wrestlers they'll take it. They'll get to the uh, the backstage and then they will politic and fucking ruin that guy's career. Sometimes justifiably. Sometimes and wrestlers will just fucking throw settle. hands. Yeah, throw hands. <laughs> settle it right there in the ring and just right or, and, uh, wait, 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 or uh, in the back in the back is worse <laughs> hold on hold on hold on uh a good example brock lesnar braun Strowman. uh braun oh was, yeah 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 i remember this it was royal rumble uh in a triple threat match brock lesnar braun Strowman, and seth rollins yeah like braun and it's not totally braun's fault like he wasn't he wasn't totally trying to hurt anybody, but he was just He new. got a little overexcited. Yeah. And it, it was, he, it's what's called in wrestling, he's not being stiff, it was a potato. Yeah, he was just being stiff. He potatoed like, him. Yeah, he potatoed and, him. He gave him a and potato. And Brock paid him back. Let's see if I can find it. Hold on one second. And, uh, and I, oh man, I, look, uh, Brock Lesnar, uh, beast of a man, I would not want to piss him off at all. No, I mean, he is a shaved polar bear. I do like I mean, the, it's, ooh. I do like the story that Jim uh, Jim Cornette tells about Brock uh, Lesnar. Is that Jim Cornette or Mark Marrow? No, it's Jim Cornette. Jim Cornette. Because uh, okay. he basically he got uh, pissed off Jim Cornette. And, <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah. and Jim Cornette was just like, I'm not going to fight you. I will just shoot you. <laughs> like, yes. I will take out a gun. You got all the muscles in the world. But guess what? It ain't going to stop a bullet. So, right. like, yeah. Sounds about uh, right. Mar 
Mark Marrow tells a story about how he found out that his wife was cheating on him, his uh, Rena Marrow. Sable. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he finds out that he gets word in the locker room that somebody's been sleeping with his wife. And he goes to find them, and he gets told that the person is with her now. Go find her and take care. So he goes running off and charging down the hallway and opens up the door. And that's when he found out that Brock Lesnar was the one sleeping with his wife. Yeah. And to put it in Mark Merrow's own words, that's when he learned the value of forgiveness. Yeah. <laughs> you should take her. It's, it's yours now. <laughs> All right, I put up the... I got the primary monitor. Yeah, I got the primary yeah. monitor running. I'm yeah, just going to play this clip real quick. Uh, Braun Strowman, you know, no bitch either. World, uh, uh, world, former competitor, World Strongest Man competition. Gives Brock a potato. And Brock is like, nope. <laughs> he, that's a knockdown in the UFC right there. <laughs> just punch that man so, right in the temple. <laughs> side of the fucking head. Oh, no. Uppercut and then to the temple. And then takes him down. <laughs> Bro, and then it's like it's time to slow down, boy. <laughs> and I mean, he did. He called it in the ring. He said, "Slow the fuck right. down." So right, and that's fair. That's yeah. that's one definitely a fair way to handle it. Mm -hmm. He got need in the side of the head. You got a big polar bear that's pissed. It happens. We got a. Vader I mean, splash. it ain't ballet, baby. We got Vader splash. This is the. Do you want the reunion Vader splash first or the other Vader splash first? Uh, real quick, uh, one more story. Um. There is one other way to handle it, and this story comes from Big John Studd, who had issues with Andre the Giant. Oh. Or, more accurately, Andre the Giant had issues with Big John Studd. Yeah. Because Andre's gimmick was, I'm a giant. Big John Studd's gimmick, before when Andre's not around, was, I'm the biggest giant in wrestling. And Andre was like, no, you ain't. That's my shit. You ain't stealing it. Mm -hmm. And... Andre would be very physical and would hit hard and knock him down and slam him and butt splash him and fart on him in the corner as oh. Andre was wont to do while oh. laughing about it. Oh, yeah. Big time. Well, Big John Stud goes to his manager, Bobby the Brain Heenan. Love him. And he says to Bobby, uh, I don't think Andre likes me. And Bobby goes, oh, well, why don't you think Andre likes you? And Big John Stud goes, because Andre said, I don't like you. And he's trying to figure out what to do, how to get him back, what to ha what to do about it. He's telling Bobby he's being physical with me. He's hurting me in the ring. I need to get I, uh, how what what should I do about this? And Bobby goes, "Well, John, here's what I think you should do. If Andre doesn't like you and he's hurting you in the ring, what you should do is you should walk yourself to the back. You should bow up, get all your breath about you, kick in the door." Grab your shit and leave the country, because Andre is not going to forgive you. No. It's over with. Yeah. You're done with. Just just leave. Yep. And three weeks later, Big John Stud was out of the WWF. <laughs> so that is the other option to do, Vicer, is if you, if someone's doing something to you you don't like, but they're way bigger and tougher than you, just leave. Yeah, for real. Leave the company. <laughs> That's all you can do. <laughs> While we're on the topic of Andre the Giant, uh, there's a story that Bobby Heaton used to tell <laughs> with the Ultimate Warrior. And everybody's got Andre stories. Yeah, and <laughs> the Ultimate Warrior, everybody knows the Ultimate Warrior, or you guys probably know the Ultimate Warrior. He was very popular, very, uh, uh, he was the number two. Uh, uh, some would say the number one uh, for at least a small amount of time, number one. Well, it, it all depends on whether or not you were eight. Yeah, that's true. Um, but during the time he was he was basically set up to be Hulk Hogan's uh, the, heir apparent. Yep, the heir apparent for Hulk Hogan, and he was super over Ultimate Warrior. Yes, super over. Like everybody loved the Ultimate Warrior. The fans loved him. But when they would tour on the territory circuit, when they were trying to build Ultimate Warrior up as a worthy adversary in the fans' mind to hold the uh, the world title belt. They would do a certain segment, a certain move segment. Andre would get tied up in the ropes. This is not the gift, but it gives you an idea. Andre would get tied right. up in the ropes and he would sit there with his arms in the crucifix pose in the ropes and the warrior, ultimate warrior, would run the ropes at full speed and just shove his fucking arm in a clothesline into Andre's face and chest. Andre didn't like that. Wasn't if a fan of that. For anybody who's not familiar with the Ultimate Warrior, somehow, the easiest way to describe him is barbarian in full rage mode, mm -hmm. 
Anabolics. Fueled, uh, fueled by steroids and cocaine. Oh, yeah, big time. Going full speed all the time because that's the only way he knows because if he slows down, his heart thinks he can slow down and will explode. Yeah, exactly. Like, Ultimate Warrior, not a very good wrestler when it comes to wrestling uh, and protecting your opponent, making it look real, making it look believable, not a very good wrestler. But in terms of the intangible it factor, had it in spades, oozed Oh it. yeah, all uh, he he rolled a nat, nat 20 in charisma. There's no doubt about it. it, it just unfortunately, he also rolled a six in intelligence. Mm -hmm. so and ooh, like the Ravishing Rick Rude had a story before his death where uh, Ultimate Warrior would gorilla press somebody and lift them above his head. And the way you safely do that is by putting your hand on their inner thigh and lifting them. And Warrior would just grab them straight by the balls. Yeah. Just hand straight to the nuts and lift them above his head to yeah. do that. And it's like, that's not nice. No. So Warrior would do this. They would do this on house shows. They would do. They would tour the circuit, the territory circuit. So they do shows every single night. Warrior and Andre the Giant doing this, this segment, this move sequence. With Andre got tired over and over. Andre got tired of having a big, burly, muscular arm thrown into his chest and face every fucking night. So Andre, what he did, Warrior would go full speed like he is right now, just full speed. Andre would loosen his arm, stick his hand out, his big giant hand, and he fucking, <laughs> the ultimate warrior ran into the guy's fist, shoot, knocked himself out. Like fucking yes. middle of the ring, knocked himself out. And then he, Bobby Heaton. He cussed himself by running full speed into Andre the Giant's lunchbox size hands. Yeah. <laughs> fucking, and Bobby Heaton would later say that they would go to do, after that night, they would go to do the tour. They would continue doing the segment, but every time that warrior would run the ropes and run into Andre when he was tied up in the ropes. He would gingerly throw his arm <laughs> at Andre. And then Andre would turn over to look at Bobby Eden and say, he's learning. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't even get into the Andre stories where he's literally sitting on Jake the Snake's Robert's chest in the corner oh. and farting on him until <laughs> shit comes out. <laughs> it's like, oh. I, I think I think like the next bro down uh, wrestling segment we should do should be all about Andre and Andre stories. Oh like, my god! There's so no. many good Andre stories. All I right. mean, there's stories about the vehicle he had to use to get to town to town, which was a giant work utility van. Yeah. There's stories about how he had to use the tub as a toilet when yeah. he ever he traveled to Japan. And, well, no, and every... they kept inviting him back. Every hotel that he went to, everywhere he couldn't oh use a normal god. toilet, so he had to shit in the tub. Oh my god, that's... Can you imagine that poor cleaning crew? Oh, god. oh Jesus. Alright, where were we at on fat guys squashing people? Vader Splash. Oh, Vader. I used to love Vader. He was one of my original avatars when I was doing um, online personalities and forums and shit. Vader, still one of my all-time favorites, as believable as it gets. The Moonsault is more impressive. His Vader Bomb, this slingshot splash right here, more effective. Oh, yeah. I mean, look at him coming down on Yokozuna's giant thigh. Oh, yeah. Don't feel bad for Yoko. He's every single day doesn't wash his trunks. So if you have this giant mountain of a man who's coming on to you with all of this meat. Cut his back too. Mm -hmm. Because remember, Stan Hansen took his eye out in the middle of a match oh, one yeah. time. He sure did. Just because just Stan Hansen's friggin' blind and overhand punched him just right to where his eyeball popped out in the middle of a match in Japan. Hold on, let me see if so, I can find it real quick. No, we don't need to find an eye popping out. That's no, okay. I want to see it. I want to see it. <laughs> that's, what, that's what Twitch is here for. Like, By the way, folks, uh, this is our weekly get demonetized on Twitch and YouTube segment. That's fine. That's <laughs> fine. We're doing it for the people. We do for it the for the content. Yes, we do it. We do it for y'all, <laughs> chat. Here, I got a still shot. And this is Vader pushing oh. his eyeball back in. Oh, God. Mid-match, oh. finish oh. the match. Oh. Nope, uh, roll me up, go home, we're done. Yeah, for <laughs> real, bro. Oh, for real. Geez. All right, so that's Vader. Ah, so that's Vader. Stan Hansen was a big boy, too. He was 300-something yeah. pounds. He's cowboy. still a big boy. He's still a big guy. Yeah. All yeah, right. The only problem is it's like how many of these people became Republicans? It's like, oh, hey, it did make sense. It them. makes sense. Yeah. Independent contractors. Yeah, they, they, they don't want taxes like they're not they're not interested in taxes. 
We got it, yeah. Uh, all right, fine. I'm not gonna get into it. I'm yeah, not gonna do it. Right we don't now. need to. Yeah. We got Yoko Bonsai safe. Is the next all one. right? No, well, no. Let's uh, let's go with earthquake first. Oh, that's right. We have earthquake. I'm sorry. Uh, all right, because we'll, uh, now we're getting from splashes to sits. I love earthquake though. <laughs> I've told people, but I've told it on this show before that my finishing move would be the flying butt splash the and big, earthquake. The big oh cushion. man, big old earthquake. Erica's favorite wrestler, the old Earthquaker. Oh man, he's the flying butt splash, the whoopee cushion. That that is effective. It's believable. You you know it's coming, and you know to fall to Hulk Hogan. But and who was the? There was like a shoot fighter in Japan who was trying John Tenta, and oh, like I don't even. Remember. You have to look up John Tenta shoot fight. I the middle of the match, as they're having the match. This wrestler, this Japanese wrestler, uh, did not basically didn't want a job to John Tenta. He was mad over the fact that he had a job. He had to lose to yeah. John Tenta, and he had uh, what's called boo boo face. Yeah, Go <laughs> he's like, oh, I'm gonna lose, <laughs> being all pissy and shit. Koji Katao. Koji Katao. Oh yeah. Okay, so yes, Koji Katao uh, actually made it to WrestleMania, uh, teaming with um, uh, Gen uh, Genichiro Tenru. I think it was WrestleMania Seven. Mm -hmm. So Koji Katao actually made it. He was also a famous sumo wrestler. And he fought John Tenta and decided, I'm not going to sell anymore because I should be beating this person. I, I can hit them for real. I would win in a real fight. So he decided to start working real. Yep. He decided to start shooting on John Tenta. And John Tenta wasn't having it. No. No, sir. He's big. He's fat. He's Canadian. He can fight. He's got some moose blood in him. Oh, yeah. Big time. All right, I'm just skipping. I'm skipping ahead to pretty much the end result. All right, I'm gonna pop it up through YouTube. Yeah, there you go. All right, we gotta turn off. Wait, are, is this actually the real Kane music? You're about to get D, uh, DCMA uh, there, buddy. Yeah, I saw that. That's fine. <laughs> Whatever. I don't care. I'm like, um, all right. So we'll turn off the music. We'll come over here. We're gonna pop up primary monitor real quick so you guys can see the video. I'll turn up the volume so you guys can hear it. I'm just going to the end, basically, where John is starting to get really fucking pissed off. He's not oh, happy yeah. about it. Like, yeah. all right. Because he, there's no call for it. John no. Tenta was a human gummy bear. He was just brilliant and nice and sour. <laughs> a human gummy bear. <laughs> uh, Koji Katao rocking his best uh, Toshiaki Kawada tights. I love the, those tights, though. Barred those tights his pants. Awesome. <laughs> See, now they have lost trust in each other. They are not happy with each other. John is especially not happy. Well, now they're, now they're wondering where the next potato's coming from. Like, where are the next receipt? You see Katao just looking at his fist. <laughs> like, looking at Earthquake's fist. He <laughs> shakes it off, dusts it off. Oh, oh uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> Because especially in the middle of a match, when your opponent starts shooting on you for real, it's like, well, what do you do at this point? Where, where are we supposed to go? Are we right. having a, a war? Are, are we doing this? Are we doing this, bro? Are we going? Are yeah. we doing this? Not happy. No. Not happy. Not even, no even pretense of wrestling now. It's, you going? You going? You might have, are we doing this? Yeah, see, he is, and again, super nice guy. I would not fuck with John Tenta <laughs> at all. Yeah, there's them starting to get into it for real there, oh, down man. the corner. So They good. called the fight and Katow left the company. Just oh. immediately left the entire wrestling business because no because nobody could trust him anymore, and he couldn't knock out the dude that he was trying to real fight. So it's like ah, it was worthless. I'm leaving. Yeah, for real, bro. Uh, all right, so that's uh, funny. Fun, no, funny thing with Earthquake is he got out of wrestling and became a big wig with Men's Warehouse. <laughs> he started. Uh, I don't. I don't remember if it was Men's Warehouse. Or something. He started selling big and tall, uh, you know, uh, sports coats. Makes and, sense. You know, nice outfits and things like that. And I, one of my regrets in life is I was never able to buy a three-piece tuxedo from Earthquake. That's a sentence. <laughs> That's hilarious. All right, we're gonna pick up with Yoko. We've made it to the the big time. 
Here's um, we are evolving. This is the clip that because when I the premise of the whole thing was effective finishing moves, and it turned into fat guys squashing people because of this clip. Because the first thing my I thought of was Yoko squashing a jobber because he either slipped or was ornery at the time and decided to murder somebody in the middle of the ring. You want safe first or unsafe first? Well, let's show everybody how you're supposed to do the bonsai drop. Okay. So this is Yokozuna. Yeah. One of the one of the best big men in the business. He literally was 600 pounds. Not actually a sumo wrestler. Hawaiian, Samoan. Yeah. Hawaiian, Hawaiian Samoan cousin of The Rock. Yeah, for real. I, he just somewhere in that weird family tree, one of The Rock's cousins. And this is Yoko's finishing move, the bonsai drop. And the most believable finishing move in the history of wrestling. If I were a wrestler, this would be my finishing move, and it would be called the unbearable weight of massive talent. <laughs> no, I mean, it, <laughs> now the way that Yoko what? is doing this move right now. It's he's actually doing it safe. He's safely doing it because when he jumps off the top rope, he's landing on his feet first. Yeah. He's holding on to the top rope. So basically the, the the giant impact of his big ass dump truck falling on him is it's alleviated. It's not the full force. And he's got his hands on the top rope. He lands with most of his uh, weight on the feet first and the butt just kind of and Jim Cornette, uh, you know, a skinny, skinny ish manager used to say that he had taken the bonsai drop from yokozuna during their time feuding to it and it felt like two pillows landing on you yeah like if you are a wrestler and that's one of the things that's very impressive about wrestling it's not too dissimilar from martial arts is in the fact that you have a full range and understanding of how your body works like, you can throw your body around to a point yeah. where it doesn't hurt anybody. You can throw it around to the point where you can fucking hurt somebody really yes. hard. Which but, is where we're going next. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah, <laughs> body control is huge, without a doubt. Yeah. Frankie, you got it on the mark, man. So, and Yoko is taking care of his opponent right here. He is taking care of... Right here, yes. <laughs> Although, Six and I were having a conversation. We, we couldn't quite settle whether or not... Yoko in this next clip slipped and his feet went out from under him or if he was just super pissed at this jobber because he asked to get too much to a weight loss clinic <laughs> jump off the top rope onto your chest and squeeze it out of you forcefully maybe that's what would have worked all right we're gonna I'm gonna play the OSW clip real quick because we're talking about Yoko so all right so a little premise while he gets this set up uh, Virgil was Yokozuna's first pay-per-view opponent it was, a, I believe, debut of the Survivor Series and squashed Virgil, who had been a, you know, a decent up there baby face in status. And Yoko hits him with uh, the belly to belly and the bonsai drop and crushes him. Uh, he was a little bit safer than that poor jobber. Oh, yeah. But here is Virgil talking about what happens <laughs> <laughs> when Yokozuna gets you. By the way, Yokozuna's name is Yokozuna. Just Yoko keep that Zuna. in mind. Just keep that in mind while you watch uh, the Marinara Virgil. King here. Oh. That's from that's from OSW. It's three Irishmen who review yeah. wrestling shows. Definitely give them a look. They're super entertaining. Oh, They're we're gonna entertaining. get here, folks. Oh man. Um, yeah, that's. I tell you guys, <laughs> I don't know how Lord Alfred Hayes kept his shit together. I don't either. Because honestly. <laughs> I would have lost it. I lost it immediately as he started talking. Because old Virgil there, the major domo of meat sauce, man, <laughs> that dude would could cut a stupid promo that would make you laugh. Oh, man. Oh, and we'll the, talk about more about Lord Alfred Hayes. I love some Lord Alfred Hayes. I do, too. That's the funny thing, though, is that, like, look, during this period of time, Virgil was over like crazy. Like, he was super. until they started... He got over on his own, being the the million dollar man's lackey, and then people wanted to see him beat up the rich white guy so much. Yep. And then when they finally gave it to him, oh, that's it. All right. Well, we're done with you. 
and then once he started to be pushed, everybody lost interest. Yeah, they did. It, 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 it was. It, do you remember when fandangoing was a thing? Yeah. For like three weeks, and peop, it went viral, and cheerleaders were doing it, and it was at NBA games, and everybody was doing the fandango dance. Yeah. And then as soon as the WWF tried to make it a thing and tried to play along with it and started recognizing it on their own, oh, well, this is boring. We're not doing it anymore. Correct. No, that's going to be a. Once it stops being natural. That's going to be a brainworm video now. Well, we're we're glad we could give that to you, Erica. Yakazuma, he's a menace. Yep, Yakazuma's like a Titanic landed on him. Speaking of Titanics landing on people, yes. Um, so uh, we're, we'll start. We got the, this photo here. This is where we'll end up on effective finishing moves. Nia Jax. Nia Jax. Here she is. Nia Jax is a another cousin of the Rock. Yep. And therefore, also a cousin of Yakazama. Yep. <laughs> so, <laughs> Nia Jax, Australian-born, Hawaiian-raised, uh, American-Australian-Samoan mix of some kind, whose, uh, her dad was like third cousin to Peter Maivia. So, mm-hmm. they're all just in the mix somewhere of the Rock's family tree. Mm-hmm. She is a former plus-size model. She's a good-looking mm-hmm. woman, too. She's yeah, she is. She's got a good smile. I mean, good for her. And she's also now adapted the whole "I'm a sit on people to destroy them" because she's fat. Yeah. And she, I, you know, maybe I'll get canceled for fat shaming somebody. But your finishing move is a flying butt drop. The premise is you are fat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that that is how that move works. Yeah. The wrestling. If you're skinny ass Scarlett Johansson and you try to bonsai drop somebody, they're gonna no sell you. Wrestling not necessarily known for subtle subtlety no. and nuance. Because no. when you boil <laughs> wrestling down, you are communicating a story in the ring to the cheap seats through body right. language, through visual appearance. So you don't really need subtlety and nuance in wrestling. I mean no. there there is. It does exist at certain points, but for the most part, it's you got a you got a big old fatty fatty moo moo squashing the shit out of somebody. Right, so you're oh you you weigh uh, uh, you were what doctors would describe as morbidly obese. Mm-hmm. Well, you're gonna start sitting on people. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, maybe touch up on Nia Jax's reputation for being an unsafe right. worker. So Nia Jax um, goes back to something that we said uh, with uh, Big Daddy Voodoo. Uh, Nia Jax works like a refrigerator with legs. <laughs> And what we mean, what we mean by working? <laughs> she's not fluid. She's not super safe. It's kind of just uh, pick somebody up and throw them where they land. Oh, I need to punch somebody. Well, I'm gonna punch the biggest star in the company and break her nose mm-hmm. before a big coming out pay per view show, mm-hmm. and you know, knock her off the show completely because I can cuss her. That's or you know, there's also uh, hey I'm gonna jump in the air and wherever I land that's where I'm landing good yeah. luck to you when when we talk about working in wrestling again it is choreographed it's simulated violence but it's you're supposed to make it look as believable and real as possible without hurting the opponent in real life or at least and, like hurting them to the point where they actually have injuries so on and so forth that's what working that, means. That last part is uh, something that a few people have a hard time with. Yes. The whole without hurting anybody thing. And Nia Jax has hurt a few people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's um, da- that's also dangerous if you're a wrestler. If you have the reputation if you yeah. have the reputation of hurting people, nobody wants to fucking work with you. All right, now, Six, Erica is suggesting in chat that she could do an effective bonsai drop on somebody, but that's only because she pierced her lungs with her bony ass. <laughs> I, I hear you, Mama. I I'm, I, I'm in the same. I'm in the same category. I just, I just impale somebody with my elongated <laughs> spine. All right, so that's Nia Jax static. So that's Nia Jax. Um, she because she's the Rock's cousin is being pushed again. Being pushed means you're top of the marquee. You're being seen on television. You're being. She's getting wins, and they're making her to be a big deal. Yeah, they're promoting you basically. She won the Queen of the Ring tournament at uh, Sweet Saudi Blood Money 19. <laughs> which, by the way, wrestling and WWE should never... Should, why the fuck are you in Saudi Arabia? Uh, I mean, how much... Uh, yes, you get paid $300 million for each of these shows. That's why. Come on. <laughs> That's why. It's Come money. on. It's money. 
You could you're, make you're the a, argument that money does break down those barriers, you know, like Saudi Arabia, you know, like yeah, maybe they want to do some PR control. Ugh. But you're a nine billion dollar company. Why do you need a hundred million from Saudi Arabia? Nah. I mean, uh, come on, have some standards. He says to a wrestling company. Yeah, it's business, baby. Business. <laughs> he says to a wrestling company that he just talked about. Yeah. Oh, your fat sit on someone. Yeah, Saudi Arabia <laughs> basically funds boxing these days. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah, that, it's, yeah, it's true. They got a lot of money over there in Saudi Arabia. They, it's amazing. We're all. Uh, it just. It's almost like it comes up from the ground. Yeah. All right, we're gonna turn primary monitor on. We're gonna show you Nijax. Yeah, this is a night. Nice, is this the. Oh, this is my hole. One? Do you want my hole first or you want that at the end? Yeah, let's establish it. Here's the other thing that Nia is famous for is her selling thing where it's, oh, I'm not going to just display something that hurts. I'm going to tell you it hurt too. See if y'all can figure out what Nia Jack's injured. Uh, she was famous for that. <laughs> oh, that is the best part. If, if, if we could have a career just yelling my hole yeah. once on national that, television. That, I mean, we're, we're getting there. Um, like, we're, 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 we're close. <laughs> this is, all right, this is the, the finish, the so, unsafe finish. This is the end of the match, and they were they're the end of a tournament, Lyra Valkyria. By the way, they're wearing full body suits because they're in Saudi Arabia, because if you show ankle, then that would impure somebody? Yeah, I guess. Oh, can't piss off the Saudi god. Ugh. I mean, so, the god that made those bodies. Bodies and that skin. Right. So Lyra Valkyria, Irish woman who's a Valkyrie for some reason, she's uh, she's wearing a full bodysuit and um, uh, 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 Nia Jax is wearing a deflated hot air balloon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, play it. Got her. Play it. Uh, <laughs> All right. Attention to Sammy. Can't quite do it. Oh, oh no. Jesus oh, Christ. Christ. God bless. Paying attention to the Sammy. You, Can't quite uh, so that is not safe. Didn't land on her feet at all. Paying attention to Sammy. All ass right to the gut. Oh, that's oh not, my god. That's, that's not how you do a bonsai drop. That's not how you do it safely. No, that's not. Oh. Oh, later. That's that's god. how you hurt people. That's how you hurt people. Damn. I feel bad for Lyra Vell because she's trying her hardest to make it to sell it in an original position. She flips over her trying to do a turnbuckle sunset like powerbomb type thing. And it kudos to her for being willing to take that move. Mm. I wouldn't. Mm. I'd be throwing and some you hands. See why. I'd be throwing I'm some not, hands. I'm not sure Lyra can have kids anymore. Mm -mm. The uterus just fell right out of her. It was just oh like, my just you, you, involuntary hysterectomy. That's what that was. And just, of course Oh my god. Of course. The wrestling community in the internet, they are a bunch of edgelord trolls. So they <laughs> they they grabbed so, onto this. By the way, if you don't see the label at the top, this is Botchamania 494. Yeah. We're almost at 500 of Botchamanias. I've been watching this series for 20 years. Yeah, literally since the first one came Love out. Love Botchamania. So they get a hold of botches, make them funnier, and put them on the internet. So here's one of my favorite examples of... Nia Jax destroying Lyra Valkyria. Put down, maybe looking for a sunset power bomb. Has Nia? Can she quite get her up and over? Yeah. Lyra was obviously paying attention to Sammy. <laughs> <laughs> Put down, maybe looking for a sunset. Oh, that was from Viser. Has Nia? Random video Can game references. There you go, Viser. <laughs> Lyra was obviously paying attention to Sammy. <laughs> Completely accurate. We got, we got one more. One more, and this one is my favorite one. Paying attention to Sammy. Kick. Oh, that, is that is it. That is it. Paying attention to Sammy. Kick. Oh, Nia Jax X-raying Lyra Valkyria. Attention to Sammy. Oh, one more time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. That is it. That is it. And you can tell she knows she fucked up. She yeah. knows. She knows. Oh, my God. So, Lord. yeah. Those are videos and clips and pictures of fat guys squishing not fat people. There it is. And my favorite thing in wrestling. I, I love it. And I appreciate you all for coming on that ride with me. Without a doubt. Uh, fantastic beef. I love the wrestling segments of the bro down. It's my favorite part of the bro down.
Well, I mean, it's something that we both know a lot about, something mm-hmm. that we both enjoy. Yeah. And it's not like you and I can't spin a yarn about yeah, something no. that we're focused Pe- on. People people are attracted to people passionately talking about anything. So, like, right. so long as you talk about it with passion and you can break it down for people to understand, you're good. Well, no one's redeemed Pentiment, so it's time to close the show. No, uh, John redeemed Pentiment. He already did. He did not. He I did. did not see that. He he redeemed it. We're going to oh, play it. It's okay. We know exactly where we're at in Pentiment. It should be breezy. We're going to get right in there. What, now that you figured out that you can find an objective on your map to tell you where to go? Bro, I was steaming over that for an entire week straight. I was, even when I was working on the route, I was like, I cannot believe I fucking could not find a fucking objective on the goddamn map. Are you fucking serious? (laughs) Oh, John, you got to admit, you feel enriched with our wrestling content. Come on, you know you enjoy watching the, the fat people just pancake other people. He loves it. Loves, loves it. it. Mm. Well, uh, stay tuned because we're doing it every week. So <laughs> it, it, it gets his blood going as soon as he's done sucking it out of someone else's neck. We finally. Fit. You did a gay Nosferatu joke. <laughs> That's a slow burn. What? We, <laughs> we finally figured out, you know, the, the segment that works on the bro down. So we're going to milk that fucking utter dry, boys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. <laughs> All right. We're switching right. over to Pentiment. Let me share the screen with Beef. He's going to need it. Pentiment. There you go. Can you see it? Yeah, that's right, Frankie. Just in time for Pentiment. Yeah, mm-hmm. yep. we're good. Indeed. Ten minutes on the clock. All right. You can see it, Beef? You're good? Yeah, I can see it. We're all. I can see and hear it, yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, my screen looks... Hold on. My shit looks a little squashed. Let me, let me move it a little bit. No, nope, maybe not. Uh, maybe it was actually already okay. No, it was already. Fuck it. That's uh, it's good. We're dealing with that. It's especially after how the beginning of the send it or started, it was like oh, I'm not fucking with it. Uh, so Frankie's got himself a bacon and bacon egg and cheese Asiago bagel that he's going to enjoy. Good for him. Nice. I, uh, Mrs. Beef is making uh, some uh, monkey bread with eggs and pull apart and cinnamon and cream cheese stuff. And oh, that's uh, it. Smells good in here. Was that honey? No cream cheese, but apparently, you know, I'm sure it's got frosting or some other stuff I can throw on there. All right, we should be good. This should that should do it. Okay, bada bing. Can uh, I John's use asking skills? if he can <laughs> redeem time to make it longer. <laughs> Hell no! No oh god! <laughs> Why do you want this, John? All right, so we're moving around. Everybody can hear. It looks good. Yes. All right, cool. Yep, we're good. All right, where we last left off, we're working on the the mural. Where we last, uh, so let's see. This is Magda in her new Dexter den. Mm. Hey, Mags, how's the mural coming along? I'm gonna be blind for a little while, so if chat says anything good, let me know. Uh, 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 Magdalene, can't you let it go? Mags is so much easier. No, no, Otto Zimmerman, I cannot. Uh, don't call me. Wait, so a big storyline in this is is people getting dead named? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Fine. Anyway, Magdalene, how's the mural going? It doesn't look like much yet. Oh yeah, that's gonna help you. Just go ahead and neg her. Yeah, this guy, this guy has no idea how to talk to ladies. She's you already told you multiple times, stop calling her Mags, and you just keep on doing it. And then you're just right. dissing on her oil painting. You don't neg women. It doesn't actually work. It only worked for like the edge of the edge lord two thousands. Mm. Nah, nah. What would you know about it? Do you even know the difference between egg tempera and oil paint? Egg Pantera? What? Yeah, I love Egg Pantera. I mean, one has an egg in it, I guess. Yeah, you got me there. Ah, you're hopeless. Uh, biggest hit of Egg Pantera was Walk, but it was W O K. I hate that I laughed at that. I hate that I laughed at that. I only, oh. I only just finished priming the wall. I, I literally, the joke hit me so hard. I segued out of fucking Sparrowson voice. <laughs> now, I, now I have to decide what to depict. It's hard to piece together the history of Tassing when it happened so long ago. Since the Abbey Library burned, baby. 
And I can only rely on stories from people around Tassing. Even what I could find out about the Romans and the pagans was obscure. I had to go into the old salt mine to find anything. At least now I know what to paint for the first part of the mural. So, what is it? Oh. Ah. Uh, uh, I don't know. John with a good follow up. Egg Pantera only plays brunch venues. <laughs> Beef, which one should I do? You know the endings. Oh, I, I, uh, I think we're already past the point where you'll get any good endings. Go with whatever you feel like. Okay. The Mars is a wolf, the Div Tassia, and how the spring was blessed. Remember the legend about the chieftain Ratus who healed the wolf? I'll recreate it. Uh, it shows how our answer. Yeah, this is the one. We're going to unveil the fact that we've been actually pagans this whole time. <laughs> I'll recreate an image I found in the mine. It showed how our ancestors made human sacrifices to appease Perchta and the spirits. <laughs> uh, human sacrifice? Yeah, the natural answer. Don't you think that's a bit much? I mean, I, I don't know how the rect of the town will take it. Especially Father Thomas. Ah, fuck that guy. So what made you chose, choose this story anyway? And how are you going to gif... Uh, 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 on a mural of a giant 600 pound man going through someone's chest. <laughs> ah, I don't think we should hide our pagan past. This is what our people did. I guess it's true. Still, I think it will shock some people. Especially Father Thomas. Why does he keep bringing it around to Father Thomas? Yeah, is for he real. Like try to murder you? Is that what? Thanks for explaining it. Ah, uh, um. Over explain it. That, you definitely over explain. Of course. I want you to all understand why I'm making these choices. Well, now that I figured out this portion of the mural, I'd better start thinking about the next section. I'll leave you to it, Mags. Uh, 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 uh Magdalene. Yeah, that's right. Get it right, bitch. Uh, good night, Oats. Uh, excuse me, it's Oates Zimmerman. <laughs> Good night, Magdalene. All right, so now you've got to go through. You figured out one part of the mural. You've got to figure out the other four parts. Enjoy. Oh God, are you serious? I mean, I'm not. I'm not unserious. Oh fuck me, man! I thought we were done. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I think we're, shit. I think we're getting closer. I hope so. Hold on, guys. I'm setting up my other computer so I can actually see chat because right now I'm running blind. So we are blind. And uh, now that I've decided how to depict Assing's earliest history, I should decide how to paint Kearsau's history. Uh, Mother Illuminati, Leather mentioned that a Matthew. Oh, Matthew. <laughs> we know Matthew. Fong. Used to be a that's brother. Right, that's Kirsten. right, John. It, it is Oats on Toast Zimmerman. You're that's right. right. He's my kind of guy. Oats on Toast. She said nah, he knew a great deal about the Abbey's history. I should write to him and see what he remembers. Oh, and I have Escher's letter to answer, too. God damn it. We got so many letters. I should... see, see, it's funny. We spend an hour and a half talking about how you hate responsibilities, and you pick a game that's focused on responsibilities. Yeah. And just having to do things you have to do. For real. Social obligations on top of that. This is why you always feel tired. You play games where you just give yourself chores. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. ah, before I write, I should read that old book Brigida gave me. Fuck, we got to read books, too? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Brigida. Maybe I'll learn something pertinent for the murals. All right. Uh, now nah, we're just going to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> just, that sounds like you. We're going to sleep nah, on it. Sleep. <laughs> we're going to sleep on it. Uh, I don't know where the book is. Have is you it in... looked on your map? No, nah, I don't. What are maps? Let's talk to Dad. Hello, Magdalene. All right, let's not talk to Dad. <laughs> let's not talk to Dad. No, no. Because he's, uh, he's racked with the COPD. So oh, yeah. He, he's a goner. He's a longer. Um, yeah, we don't have... Uh... Well, I mean, it literally said write on the desk there, and she said that she had to write some things. Well, I was just looking to see if we had the book. Didn't... Dude, we are way beyond getting everything in this game, so oh, I think yeah. you just, <laughs> we just That's need true. to continue. Yeah, we're just going to close it out. All right, let's write. All right, where to begin? Mm, right, the old book. It was the Barons before Martin stole it. 
I can't make much out of it. It's in oh, wing reading beings. simulator. All right. <laughs> the Latin is much harder than I'm used to. Wait, why are all the exclamation points replaced with eggplants? <laughs> the book isn't in great shape either, since it's been sitting in a farmer's house for so long. Let's see. Ah, there's a section about the various dedications erected in the town that might be easier to read. The ergo simulacrum inagre ut mars nostrum operum conspicuor. Roman God of War. Mars represented civilization and peace through military might. Yeah, sounds, Wait, sounds like a after reading that six, why is there a pentagram on your wall and a demon coming through it? Yeah, you know, we did we did look at the Diablo trailer. And this one seems like a dedication to Mars to bless a field. What? Set it, Diana, loco, scatteraginocus, uh, ipsa? Oh, I know what this one is. Um, they're, they're, that's a prayer that they said to bless a tunnel overpass to, you know, to consecrate a car being chased by paparazzi. The virgin Roman goddess of the hunt in the wilderness, Diana, is also associated with fertility, the moon, and the underworld. All right. This one talks about Diana wetting herself? <laughs> Bathing in a spring, maybe? Ormes ut defendant opidum. Ah, this one isn't as hard. Let us pray that he or she, really, may defend the town. I'm just happy that Six is the one that had to read things in other languages this time. Yeah, for real. Because it's always friggin' me. It is, yeah. You can handle it better. Yeah. If we have to cancel you, that's fine. The show will still continue. <laughs> The channel will survive. The guy, I have no social media. Who yeah, cares? exactly. None of this really seems to make any sense. Maybe someone with better Latin than me could help me read it. The book's so big, though. It'd be a lot of work. I could ask Sister Gertrude or Baltus. Oh, Baltus is that weird fucking dude. We'll go well, to Baltus. Frank, Frankie is super excited. He's saying they're going boating on Saturday, which I'm assuming just means that there's going to be rain on Friday and he's going to sit in his car. Yeah. Uh, for real, uh, have a good time getting fucking heat stroke, Frank. Enjoy. <laughs> right. Brother, you couldn't get me anywhere close to a fucking boat right now. No. I, I do love that you gigantified your, your, uh, ank, uh, your, ank, your Frank uh, orangutan <laughs> emote. I mean, he looks like a wacky, waving, inflatable arm tube man. <laughs> this man's tube socking it. Uh, the air pockets. Like, uh, he's much better at Latin than anyone else in town. Maybe even Father Thomas, even though Dad warned me not to bother him with secular books. Chances are slim they could help, but it might be worth asking about. I should finish writing my letters first. Mother Illuminati told me that Matthew knew some of the Abbey's early history. Oh my god, how many side quests are you going to take on here at the end of the game? I don't know, man. He's the Archdeacon of Sion now. Once a free imperial city of the Holy Roman Empire, Sion became the capital of Valais when the canton joined the Swiss Confederacy following the Swabian War in 1499. And you just can't get rid of the Confederacy no matter mm. how many times you try. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Heritage, not hate. I should write to him before the snows come. I'll write to Esther, too. All right, we're writing to everybody. Fuck. Now we're into writing simulator. Here comes This is what you game. wanted, John. Uh, the most revered Matthew Fagauni, so the uh, Archdeacon, Archdeacon. Uh, no, formerly a Kirsabi. My name is Magdalene Druckerin. I'm the daughter of Tassing's town printer, Klaus. My father and I are creating a mural for Tassing's rat house. We want to show the history of the town and the abbey. Hmm. Mother Illuminati told me that you might be the best person to ask. I understand you're a busy man, but we would be most appreciative of any information you can give us. If you know of any other places where we might learn the Abbey's history, we'd appreciate it. I know it may be small comfort, but there are many in Tassing who regret what happened during the revolt. Yeah, I regret that they didn't get you, too. Yeah, for real. Sister Gertrude is still here with poor Claris, and uh, she speaks fondly of the old Abbey. Who's Claris? Order Burns. Uh, contemplative nuns founded by Saints Clare and Francis of Assisi as the name. The is, poor Clares. The poor Clares are devoted to extreme go. poverty. They subsist purely on the donation of alms. Ugh, fuck that. Yeah, they're they're the poor Clares as opposed to my favorite, the poor Clares. <laughs> the poor Clares. Thank you for your help, Magdalene. 
It is, and thank you for humoring me. Ah, it's fine, brother. I did want to finish Pentiment. I do want to finish this game. And we are... Four minutes left to finish it, though. We are in the last, like, stretch of the game. <laughs> Which we've been in the last stretch of the game for seven weeks. Yes. Aster, <laughs> please forgive me for not writing sooner. Christ, I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> the whole world seems to be crumbling around me. Even as my last letter was en route to you, Dad was attacked in the workshop in the middle of the night. He survived, thank God, but his injuries are terrible. I worry about him. He's so dizzy, he can't get out of bed. Some days his eyes become foggy and his memory fails him. Dr. Stoltz said that he's not going to recover. It's only a matter of time before he succumbs to the injury. Of course, our good doctor is incompetent and a known drunkard, so <laughs> he's been of little additional help. And I can only pray that between resting and my ministrations, Dad can, Dad can, can, at least be comfortable. He'll, he'll dance his way out of it. I think that was just an actual typo in the game. It was. It didn't get corrected or anything. It was just a typo. That's okay. We like typos here. I have no Dumb idea. Dumb game. No idea who could have wanted to attack my father or what. Yeah, I forgot that Klaus was actually attacked. I, yeah. I thought he had a, a book fall on his head or something. No, no. He got brained by somebody trying to stop him from printing the truth. I found a note by him, too. All it said was, stop. Yes, that. It wasn't from the shop, because the script was written in the most elaborate hand I had ever seen. Oh, and just wait until you find out who the real murderer is. But no one in Tassing has such skill in script, as far as I know. I know who the murderer is. And anyway, oh, I, don't have, I don't have the time to wonder about it. I did not see it coming. John is going to ask for a refund of all his nugs. <laughs> yeah, let's just, all, let's just all, spoil all, it for John right now. <laughs> it's about all 14 of them between now and the time we finish the game. <laughs> That's how Chrono Cross felt. We've been at the end of this game for weeks. Yeah, we have. <laughs> we have. I have had my hands full running the workshop alone while tending to dad. What's more, the town council intended to cancel the mural entirely. Oh, well, hey, th right now she's writing about Six's future life if he moves up to Snacksville. Yeah. Oh, the, the, Tending the land while having to care about dad dying and fine. also <laughs> getting canceled. Yeah, I was going to say, finally become a full-time <laughs> streamer, get canceled. Um, it's going to happen. I had a hell of a time convincing them to let me paint it instead. They made a fuss about my being too young, not experienced enough, not strong enough to be on the scaffold. What? Not strong? Also a woman. Don't yeah. forget a woman. I was going to say, not strong enough to be on the scaffold. All you have to do is stand on it and paint. <laughs> you know how it is. Nah. Can't wait to leave this place. Maybe it's the coming of winter, but Tassing feels more and more cramped. I've had enough of everyone asking me about the mural and doubting my skills. Working on the mural has become a welcome distraction from the naysayers and my chores and worrying about dad. Dude, I think Magdalene is you. Yeah. I think the AI has processed your entire personality <laughs> and situation. They, even, they have adapted the game to what you're talking about. They even have the mole in the right place. <laughs> right here. I mean, her, her, she does kind of have the knife jaw going on. Yeah, the knife old, jaw. Old dagger chin over here. She's got the bandana with the long hair. This is you, buddy. Knife jaw. <laughs> Alex has been coming over under the pretense of helping me prepare my paints, too. Paints ah, or pants? My pants. Um. <laughs> oh, I don't want to. I don't want to marry Oats. No, marry Oats. You need to marry somebody. Chat. Should I marry Oats? Should I play this up so Oats gets First it? answer. First answer gets in. Who is Mary Oats or not Mary Oats? Yes, Frankie says yes. The power of love survives. All right. Hold on. Someone is Someone is texting me something. I don't know what the fuck a client wants. They just text me uh, a picture with no It's a no... client. I guarantee it's a client. Don't answer it. Well, they text me a picture with no explanation whatsoever. It's just a picture. I'm like, "Okay, yes. What would you like me to do about that?" Don't open it, it's a penis. I don't know what they're... Oh, it's probably... It's children's toys. That's in the fucking pump basket. Whatever. Well, uh, I didn't put them in there. Alright, Frank said marry, but two said no, don't marry. No, we, we said the first one gets in the... Frank was first. first it's sweet and I'm glad for the company. He makes the days easier. I'd like to have the whole mural finished by Christmas if I can. I just want to finish it in time for Dad to see it. It would mean so much to him. 
If Dr. Stoltz is right, I don't know how long I'll have. I hope you're faring better than we are here. All my love, Magda. Oh, and she's fine shortening her name with her pen pal. Well, yeah, that's fine. It's true, Beef did say that. <laughs> she literally just complained about hating this town and marrying will trap her here. Yeah, you're right. No, he, he can move with her to wherever. All right, we wrote to Esther. I guess we just go to sleep. Did you check your map for objectives? Let's check our map for objectives. It's so dumb, though. You just found out about that. Yeah, no, trust me. I'm still recovering All right, yeah, from it's it. saying it's it's saying sleep. Yeah, it looks like sleep. Ah, sweet sleep. Okay, cool. Got it. Well, just in case you need an overall map of Europe. Yeah. For when you're not going to any other town. Go to sleep. All right, it, uh, that's that's time. It's time to. Pack everybody's it. coming downstairs, and uh, our our ten minutes is up. He got his nugs worth. Okay, hold on. Let's just get through this, and then we'll we'll close it out. Don't even sleep under the blankets. Right on the top. Nope. Nope, just just weird. He does not just strike like, me as the kind of guy that, that will move to follow his wife's career now. No. Yeah. Oh shit, Weirdo we we slept for four days. What the fuck? Yeah, I was about to say you're you're at two weeks now. We fell into a coma halfway through our little nap. The right Reich postman. Mister Strackerin, a few more letters for you. Wow, look at these letter physics guys. Take care. Ah, uh, thank you, sir. Safe travels. What? No tip? You bitch. Uh, the first letter is from Reverend Matthew. Uh, Mr. Thuckerin, I was not acquainted with her family during my years at Kerthal. Even so, I remember your father was one of the town folk who prevented the peasantry from burning us alive. I am not overly inclined to assist the people of Taffing in their endeavors to catalog the origins of the abbey they destroyed. However, it was a long... Wait, what the hell was that? I don't know where that voice is going. However, it was a long time ago in the interest of posterity and Christian charity. I will tell you what I recall. Sometime after the Romans left, a Christian settled in the region and built Kirthal Abbey on the ruins of a fortress. The abbey was founded by noblemen at the Kirthal family. Uh, she was both the patron and its first abbess. Perhaps two centuries ago, Kirthal changed to being run by an abbot. Hey, abbot! Hey, abbot! I, I do know the reason. But many other double monasteries did likewise around the same time. It's good that they ended up together. Like, that they're still together. Oh, is is that is that Pastor Lincoln? Yeah, uh-huh. Pastor Lincoln. Oh, okay. <laughs> it may have been done out of fear of being shut down as double monasteries were frowned upon by the Pope. Sadly, that is the extent of my knowledge. Your neighbors uh, put any other records uh, about the Abbey to the torch, <laughs> as well as Mailer. Thick are fifth story of Kirthus. Thus burned the history of Kirthal. While we cannot damn it, change the path, I have heard the sisters of the poor clairs, the poor clairs, have formed a new chapter at the Abbey. I can only hope that their lone apostolic, that their love of apostolic poverty, has not driven them to impoverish the shrine of Saint Moritz. Christian doctrine that calls for followers to live without owning personal property or accumulating money. So, Joey, while it was condemned by the Catholic Church as heretical, its defenders claim their practices are based on the lives of the Christ and the apostles as described in Scripture. Assuming they have not consigned the contents of Kirithal's former occupants to a bonfire, you may find something there. It is hard to be overjoyed at the news of your neighbor's late regrets. Many of the injuries inflicted 18 years ago will never heal. Regret cannot undo what has been done, but we can all find redemption through Christ. We must pray for love and reconciliation in the days ahead. In the end, 
That is lol that matters. <laughs> Winter comes swiftly. Huguenots. Hu 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 Huguenots. Huguenots. The Huguenots. The Humongians. <laughs> Humongians and the Yokozunas. The Yakazumas. The Yakazumas and the Lutherians. Uh, plague me homeland. Thank the Lord, you still live in a land ruled by the one true church. I hope this has been of some help to you and yours. May God keep and protect you and not let your dad get hit by an assailant. Yeah. The most revered Matthew... Falk... 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 Archdeacon of Sion. Once an imperial, free imperial city of the Holy Roman Empire, Sion, Sion became the capital of Valais when the canton joined the Swiss Confederacy following the Swabian War in 1499. You, you literally read that. Did I? It. Yeah, because we made a confederacy joke. Oh, it sounded familiar, but oh, Jesus, we got another one. Oh, God, why? Ah, another reply from Mester. Oh, Magdalene. I am terribly sorry to hear about your father. My parents send the deepest condolences. If we can provide you anything from Prague, we you only need send a word. I know we are further away than is easy to travel, but I will see what we can do what Hashem allows. Ah, oh, fuck. I should have clicked on Hashem. I don't know what the hell that was. She's Jewish, right? Yeah, she's Jewish. Father said that he remembers no one who would want to harm your father. Yet the night I was born, he remembers great strife in town. Perhaps there's old blood over depicting the night of the revolt. Yeah, perhaps. <laughs> it may be, who would have thought. That's all he could suggest. We pray for you and your father every day in our offerings. Hashem will make all things right in time. He will exact justice on the culprit. Literally, the name in Hebrew. This is a way to refer to God indirectly. The name? The name. The name. You uh, said the name. I don't Whatever. think so. This is a way to refer to God indirectly in informal conversation or writing. He who is him, Yahweh. Yahweh. I am encouraged to hear that the town council let you continue the mural at all. The guilds here will protect your right to complete a job, especially once a contract has been reached. You'll like Prague much better than Tassing, I think. Truly, I cannot wait for you to visit. But I am glad that you have found some joy in your work on the mural in the meantime. We are all well here. Elisha has been carving a new set of wood cuttings, and Father has agreed to a new contract with the university. Uh oh. They gave him tenure so he can say whatever shit he wants. <laughs> I found Simon. His family didn't move far away after all. That's the weirdest spelling of Simon I've ever seen. Simon. He's planning on working as a doctor in the city once the expulsion order ends. In the meantime, he's starting up a new party game that where he tells people to do things. It's called Simon Says. Low hanging fruit. Beef went for it. All this, every time. All that's the only fruit I can reach. I'm fat. <laughs> His parents have been beating with other with mothers and fathers <laughs> quite often now. So I hope that I will be sending good news in my next letter. With Hashem's help. Please inform us of your father's condition in your next letter. Be well, Esther. No more letters. We're done no with the letters. No more letters. Okay, good. Save the game and get out. And that's I, all the letters I have for now. I should head home and check on Deb. Oh. I'm getting hangry. <laughs> so. Oh, it's not going to let us. Oh, God! No! Hmm. Warner was supposed to come check on Dad today. I wonder where he is. Getting drunk when Till Ullenspiegel pretended to be a doctor. <laughs> at least he showed up and his patients felt better. The titular character of a popular 15th century book, Till is a prankster, continually exposing the vices and hypocrisy of others. He's also quite skilled at tricking people into smelling, touching, or eating his excrement. 
that that's not a trick. That's bioterrorism. Yeah, bro. What's Werner's excuse? You Maybe I should shit right now. try to find him later. Ah, good morning, Madeline. Simple Simon, the low-hanging fruit pie man. Good morning, Dad. You feeling any better? Your fever broke at dawn this morning. Yeah, a little stronger, all, all things in time. Do you want anything to eat before I leave for the day? I'm working on the next section of the mural. I'm not hungry right now. I'll be all right. Your letter from the Archdeacon, yes, that's all right. What did you learn from him? Hmm. <laughs> I'm pretty Middle sure he still hates everyone in Tassin. <laughs> Um, middle, middle or bottom, whichever one you want. He didn't have much to say. He's still upset about the Abbey's destruction. He did say the Abbey was founded by a noblewoman after the Romans left. Everything else was burned in the fire. Yeah, how unfortunate. I know the brothers kept careful records of the monastery. So much lost in one night. Uh, the Archdemon did suggest that the poor Clares might have held on to some of the records from the Covenant. I should be able to learn more about Tassing's Christian history there. Yeah, an excellent place to start, Magdalene. Still you. Uh, Sister Gertrude doesn't come out of the convent much, but I think it's worth asking her. Maybe Father Thomas knows something, too. Uh, maybe he's got a secret Baconator. Uh, I should talk to him. Yeah, if I recall correctly, the Miller's wife has a long family history in Tassing. He may know something of the local history that the others have forgotten. Didn't the Miller's wife? That was, um... She was getting cocked, wasn't she? Yes, the Miller was conducting an affair. You accused his mistress of killing everybody. And uh, he got burned with the mill. So chances are she probably doesn't have a very high opinion of the fucking town. Oh, no, no. She's happy with the town because she hated her husband. Her oh, husband that's right. That's ass. right. Okay. Yeah. Fuck that guy. That guy sucked. Exactly. Elsie? I wonder. I thought she moved here when she married. She didn't have any relatives in town. Not anymore. Age, illness, and marriage took the rest of her family uh, and the townspeople. Yeah. But the Cavizels used to live all up and down this valley. Go talk to her, yeah. And nah, I will. Thanks, Dad. Hmm. Maybe something remained in the Abbey's ruins. I should definitely see what's left. Magdalene, you be careful. Those ruins are dangerous. Bro, are we doing jar puzzles again? <laughs> I will rage quit a third time. It'll be funny, too. Dad. <sighs> ah. I won't go too far into him, Dad. Just take a look. Where's yeah, all right. Where a scarf too is getting cold out now, and I can feel it in my old bones. And besides, you wear a scarf; it protects you against Johns. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Dad. I'll see you tonight. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Three vampire jokes, one show. All right. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Uh, hopefully it allows us to save. Sunday oh, frogs. Oh, thank God. We're done. We're, We're done. done. We're done. We are done. I'm hungry. I'm getting hangry. All right. We're done. Yeah, I'm ignoring my family, and they, they want to tell me something about Father's Day. Oh, that's right. Today's Father's Day, and you're a father. I forgot father's about Day that part. Today. Yes, and yes I, have, I have children. That does make me a father. Yes. Indeed, it does. Yeah. No. Well, gang, I hope you guys had a good time. I had a... a an exuberantly fantastic time. It was a really yeah, good bro no, down. This was a lot of fun. I'm happy we were able to recreate it twice. Yeah, for real. Let's <laughs> just, just be it. Two good shows. Yeah. Guys, we did two weeks in a row. Now we're going to take three weeks off. So we <laughs> right? I mean, finally we, figured out something that works. Uh, it's time to take a hiatus. We put all our effort into these last two shows. We're done. We'll come back when we have topics in three weeks. Yeah, for real. Uh, six may or may not have bought a shipping container yeah. before then. Who I'll knows? be like, guys, I'm the mid-team manager at Target now. I'm like, <laughs> it's, 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 the money sucks, but less stress. 
<laughs> I've gone back to being a sandwich artist, guys. Yep. Oh, that was Picasso <laughs> working in fucking Subway. It's like, it's like, okay. Well, now you can take those skills and you could run a Jimmy John's. Yeah. Duh, 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 to have him unload his Glock on us. Um, I, I won't redeem the wrap up. That's good, John, because I literally I've got to piss so bad oh, my no. teeth are floating. Yeah, no, like, we're we're done. We uh, wrap up another day. I mean, this whole show is basically re- the wrap up now. Pretty much, we'll probably take that redeem off. Yeah, because I mean, we're basically doing the brunch down. We're, That's what this yeah, is. Yeah, we're doing we're doing the brunch down and we're doing the wrap up where. The wrap-up was just us talking without the pretense of a show, which is what we're doing now. Well, we'll we, keep... We just get into conversations. We'll get rid of the brunch down because the bro down's new format has turned into the brunch down. So we'll yeah. get rid of the brunch down, but we'll keep the wrap-up in there because they, I think it'd be cool if people could see what our feedback is to each other and what we think about the show and so on and so forth. Oh, we'll, sure. keep, we'll keep that one on. But it's going to get shorter and shorter because uh, now that the whole family's down, it's like, oh, well, I'm not going to keep talking on Discord. Well, we don't <laughs> normally fucking go three hours for a bro down. This one was a little long. so Right. That's I okay. mean, it, but it, you know, it worked out and it was flowing the whole time. Yeah, uh, no, it was good stuff. Good stuff. I think we both we both had some good hits and we made up a new band. Uh, we're going to make AI music now for Egg Pantera. <laughs> Egg Pantera? <laughs> Egg Tempera. That's fucking hilarious. Uh, uh, guys, I had a great time. Thank uh, each and every one of you. I love all of you in chat. You're all brutally fantastic. Uh, literally, I know I say this with every fucking stream, but if you guys weren't here, I wouldn't be here. So it's like... Oh, uh, uh, real quick. Shield your socials. No, that's right. Yeah, I should probably do that. Okay, hold on. Let me get rid Tell of Tell everybody where they can find more of your crap. Yeah, more of my crap can be found... <laughs> Uh, if you like what you see, if you see what you like, give me a follow, throw me a sub. Like I, I stream every Saturday morning, usually outside the lens, which is usually like a retrospective for retro shit. And uh, the, it is loosely on topic, <laughs> loosely spend uh, 90 minutes talking about a game that I play for 15 minutes. Um, oh, man. Uh, 20 or 25 if we start redeeming on you. Yeah, for real. Like, uh, hey, how'd you like that Lemmings? <laughs> it was actually pretty good. That was a surprise. <laughs> It was, it's just dry as hell. That's the only issue dry. with living. Like, and then go to my YouTube, YouTube at six and two thirds. Uh, check out all my stuff. That's where I archive everything. So I think I need to change your OTL logo on your shield banner to uh, six and two thirds because you fine. use it for all shows now. That's fine. No big deal. Beef, you got anything you want to plug? <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> That's the the benefit of not having anything to do with social media or online. I got no plugs. I got no strings on me, baby. Man. Uh, uh, hold on. Let me see if we got someone we can raid and see if any of our people are raiding or any of our people are doing anything right now. And they're not. <laughs> so... All right, guys, we're just going to end it. I got pissed so fucking bad. <laughs> I love each clap, and every one of you. Clap, 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 bloop. clap, bloop, everybody. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Uh, we don't really have a catchphrase because we don't play games anymore. Uh, it's the bro down. Make it make sense. Yeah, make it make sense. You can't. You cannot. Like, guys, check us out. Uh, I'll be back next Saturday. I'm not doing an OTL next week because I got billing all week long, but I will be streaming. And next Sunday, we'll be back here for the bro down. We're going to do it all over again. Thank you very much. All right, get out of here. Uh, Thank you very little. You're welcome even less. Go fuck yourselves.